podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. The show originally aired on the premier radio networks, 200 stations strong, coast to coast, Saturday, April 11th, 2020. This is episode 1,685. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Simply Safe. Simply Safe is everything you need in a home security system with its award-winning protection. Go to simplysafe.com/twit and save on home security today. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy, and it's time to talk tech, computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches, you know the rigmarole 8888 Ask Leo. It's the number 888-827-5536. That's toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Here we are, week three and a half of quarantine, well, at least here in Northern California and throughout most of uh, the United States now, at least a couple of weeks, right? But tech goes on, and uh, the show goes on. As, as long as there's tech, I'll keep doing the show. Uh, some good news for PC makers. So many people working from home. Intel had a banner quarter um, because people are buying uh, computers. The companies are buying computers for um, for the you know work at home crowd. In fact, uh, it's funny because even though Intel had a remarkable quarter, uh, sales are surging, as they say, but. Uh, PC sales themselves weren't up, and I think that that's because of uh, lack of supply. Lack of supply. So people are trying to buy computers, trying as hard as they can to buy computers. Did you? Did uh, your work send you home? I hoped it did. I hope you're not out of work, because that's the option, right? It's either out of work or uh, you're working from home. I hope you're working from home. If you need help with your uh, technology, that's what I'm here for. 8888-ASK-LEO. We have friends who for a long time have avoided the Amazon Echo and the Google Home, all the voice assistants, because like normal people, they didn't want somebody listening in the house, uh, even a mechanical device. But uh, they also have three small children at home. <laughs> They're stuck with them. And I... Uh, I, I I'm, I'm a bad man, but I gave him, I had a spare Amazon Echo. I said, all right, just, you know, take this. And they're so, they're so desperate <laughs> that they said, all right. I, I gave them a whole bunch of things they could do with the kids. You know, 20 questions. I like to play Jeopardy. You can have it tell dad jokes. You can just have it sing happy birthday, all sorts of stuff. And apparently the kids were quite amused. Sometimes you, in a way, you know, you have to, you have to give up. This whole, uh, this whole notion of privacy. I think that's one of the things that we're kind of dealing with, isn't it, now? We're kind of trying to figure out, can we uh, give up this whole notion of privacy in the interest of a better society? It's interesting. Apple is uh, getting together with uh, Google to create a new surveillance technology. Now, wait, I know that sounds terrible, but it's a, I think it's actually a, a good idea. And, it, and this is the problem: is it's hard to it's hard to say no to something like this at this point because uh, it'll help us get out of the quarantine at some point. So it's a coronavirus contact tracing program. And uh, they weren't completely uh, forthcoming in the well. I guess they were, but uh, they, you know, uh, they, the the press didn't report on exactly all the details. But I've I've done some research, and a fellow named Marley Mox Mar. Now I can't Mar, Mar, Marlin Mike Moxie Marlin Spike. That's his name, <laughs> not his real name. That's the name he goes by. M M <laughs> Moxie Marlin Spike, who is actually great. He's the guy who created the. Uh, very private, very useful signal messenger system, an encryption system that uh, is so good that the federal government wants to shut it down. That's another story. 
But he tweeted a little bit about how the Google Apple thing works. And it's a very it's very interesting. The plan is um once a day, and I you know, I don't know when this is gonna come out, but I think soon. Once a day, your device, your iPhone, your Android device, derives a key, a unique key. They call it the daily tracing key. And it uses Bluetooth LE. Maybe you don't know this, but in your phone, you, you know the Bluetooth thing that you pair your headphones to or whatever. But there's also a low energy Bluetooth LE version that doesn't do any pairing. It just is always beaconing out. And they can use this to, to kind of keep an eye on who you've run into. So your device will be beaconing out at all times your daily tracing key. And every time your device's Bluetooth address changes every 15 minutes, it will broadcast a new proximity ID based on that key to everybody nearby. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And then your device keeps track of internally all the IDs of other people that it sees. In other words, it's keeping track of contacts. If someone tests positive, they don't, and they're not required, but they can choose to publish their, these keys, your device will, on a regular basis, download all the published keys of people who are COVID positive to see if they match the proximity IDs that your phone has also been recording. In other words, have I run into somebody who's ill? The idea is this is as private as it can be because it's all opt-in and it doesn't send this information to the government or anybody or Apple or Google. It's all on your phone. But you can use your phone then to say, have I run into somebody who's positive? Or maybe even more importantly, I'm positive. Let me warn everybody I had contact with. This is the thing we're going to need to do as we get out of quarantine, right, is track people who are positive and make sure they get quarantined and everybody they've had contact with is quarantine so that we don't all have to go back into quarantine. This is really an interesting idea. And as Moxie points out, ad tech, the advertisers, have at minimum known all of this <laughs> all along, right? That's what this has been used for. Uh, it, he says ad tech at minimum probably knows who you are, where you've been, and if you're COVID positive. Now, of course, the key also has to have location data tied to it, right? So the, so that's important, too, so we know where you've been. It also says, and he's worried about this, some sort of personally identifiable information. New acronym, right? We've got PPE. This is PII, personally identifiable information. He thinks would have to be combined. Otherwise, it wouldn't be any use. I have to say, I trust Apple. I don't know about Google. I think Google's heart's in the right place. And I think this is a much better way of doing it than the manual system other countries are using. Other countries have to hire hundreds of thousands of trackers, quarantine trackers, who will then, once you've tested positive, they'll sit down with you and say, okay, where, did, where were all the places you were? And we'll try to contact everybody you might have come into contact with. But if you ride the subway or get on a bus... If you're in a public place, an airport or a grocery store, you don't know who else was there. You just know you were there. So it's a very difficult thing to do for these humans manually to figure out, well, who was in the grocery store at the same time as you? That's tough. This system works automatically. It works, I think, fairly anonymously. It's a, I think it's a good idea. But this is an example of how we're going to have to kind of decide, all right, we might give up a little privacy, but is it in? wouldn't you like to get out of quarantine? <laughs> Right. And that's the th kind of thing we're going to have to do if we're going to be able to emerge sleepy eyed from our uh, from our dens, our hibernation into the world. Until there's a vaccine, this thing or mass immunity, which ever comes first, this thing's going to be still around. And you'll want to know if somebody gets sick, you'll want to quarantine them immediately and you'll want to quarantine everybody they come into contact with. So this is, a, I think it's an interesting idea. But we as a country and uh, really as a world have to decide, are we willing to give up a little bit of that to be a little bit healthier, a little bit safer, and to get out of this thing? 8888-ASK-LEO, that's my phone number if you want to talk about that or anything going on, your work-from-home situation. Uh, seeing a lot of people putting out information about work-from-home etiquette. Are you wearing pants when you do those conference calls? 
<laughs> There's a company uh, that sells boxer shorts. <laughs> they sell wild ones. They're fun. Uh, Shinesty. And they have a big ad on their front page saying, we know you're not wearing pants, so at least wear good-looking boxer shorts when you're doing those conference calls. And don't stand up if you can help it. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. If, you, uh, if you're listening to the show and you hear something you want to say, oh, I want to I want to know more about that, that's easy. All you got to do is go to the website that's free, no sign up, techguylabs.com, techguylabs.com. And, uh, and uh, we're going we're gonna to do a little show here. Kim's in the, in the house answering the phones. We'll get to your calls in just a second. <laughs> and she's laughing. Yes, because you got so involved in your... Um, mask making? Mask making. And I expect a mask next week. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you <laughs> the unbreakable phone angel. Kimmy, don't take no chaffer. Hello, Kim. Good morning. It's great to see you. It's great to be seen. <laughs> you look great. You don't look like you've been... Uh, do you so during the week when you don't have to show oh, up? You don't uh, slippers, you know, bunny I'm slippers. I'm a hot mess, and, as, yeah, as the yeah. kids say. But I, you get all dressed up for us, so thank yeah, you. Yeah, I there's nothing there's nothing going on as far as makeup or hair. I'm in yoga pants all. Nothing wrong long. with that. I'm I'm walking. I, I, you know, if I shower every day, it's a miracle. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I we're all lot. we're all relaxing. I actually come in as you know, and you come in because it's easier for us to do this in the studio with all the gear. But we have, you know, a protocol in place. I'm not, I haven't, I don't actually speak to you in person. No. You're distant. I haven't talked to you in a month. Yeah. <laughs> you do have to share a room with the engineer, but he's, but, but uh, Jeff's kind of far away, right? He's, he's not. 10, 12 feet yeah. away. I'm not. And he wears a mask. Yeah, he's, he's not. Got a mask yeah. On. So I don't, I won't have, so we were talking off the air about um, my new hobby. Mm -hmm. sewing masks. Yeah, that's why I said I expect a present next week. It's not going to be ready next week. I don't think. I mean, you I... You know, you also... Have you thought about the elastic yet? Because that's what people are having a hard time finding. Yeah, so the rag mask pattern that I'm using, you just take strips of fabric, fold oh, them over, okay. sew them, and then you tie them behind your head. Elastic's much easier. You don't have to tie it. Uh, I'm going to call Michael's because they're still doing curbside pickup. Well, here, here's, the, here's the trick I heard. What? So you go to the, the drugstore yeah. and you buy all the little girls' hair bands. Yeah. Um, There's the ways to do it. You, like, big ones. Over your whole you head. want the biggest yeah, ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. More yeah. of a headband yeah. thing. Yeah. And then you can cut those off in half. And yeah, that's what I've heard people are using. Dr. Mom, who's my sewing coach, she, she got her sister to, I bought the machine from her sister in Santa Monica, Sewing Arts in Santa Monica. Nice plug because they're very nice. Dr. Mom told me what to get. She teaches sewing at uh, Maker Fairs or used to when they were still going on. She says bias tape or fabric strips are better than elastic because it doesn't wear out. The key with these, these are going to be you throw them in the wall, you get home, mm -hmm. you untie them carefully. You don't touch the front because in case somebody sneezed on you. <laughs> and then you throw them in the wash directly into the washing machine. And washing gets, you know, cleans them. So the idea is you have a few of these so you can you can wash them. Right. I will give you one as soon as I have uh, <laughs> You'll wait until you perfect it. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, they're going to look pretty janky the first well, few. fingers crossed by then. I've never sewn. But I grew up, my, my mom sewed, uh, you know, I, I grew up around sewing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I took a chance. It's funny, a sewing machine is kind of an, it's kind of, 19th century it's technology. Archaic, yeah, but they're if, very, very technical. They now. work. Well, there's a lot of, you know. A lot of bells and whistles. Bells and whistles. They work. They get the job done. Yeah. It's kind of fun. I enjoy it. I sewed a bunch of lines on a handkerchief. There's a video of me doing that somewhere <laughs> on Instagram. And uh, it was fun. I had a good time. I can't wait. I think, you know what? I also, this, yesterday, I realized one of the things, I think a lot of people are doing this, making sourdough bread. I cooked matzo ball soup yesterday. I made a pot of beans. Yes, I, I I've been cooking pretty much every day. The, yeah. I had the first takeout something last night because I just was like, oh, I really want, I'm so sick of my own cooking right I now. I know. And we want to keep <laughs> these restaurants. Burrito, damn it. We want to keep these restaurants and their employees alive, right? Yes. So, no, I, I think it's kind of your, if you can afford it. Yeah. I know a lot can't, but well, if you can. Well, this was my first meal in a month from elsewhere. So Yeah. How was it? It was great. Delicious. Delicious. It's okay. I didn't so make it. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of articles. You just plate the food, throw out the packaging. Yeah. You can't get it by eating it. It no, has to get in a mucous membrane. So yeah. eating it's okay. Unlike, say, norovirus, uh, you know, the gastrointestinal flu, uh, you, you, you can't get it by eating it. So eat away. Just throw out the packaging. There you go. Yep. I don't know. I feel good. I feel like... Uh, 
You know, I might, I kind of, you know, I don't know. Is this, see, I'm not, my poor wife has to stay home and work. She doesn't get to do what I'm doing, which is come into the studio a few oh, days. Oh, I know. A week. I look forward to Saturdays yeah. and Sundays. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm, not a good, but I'm not, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, I'm not enjoying it, but th this is the highlight of my week. <laughs> I'm an antisocial son of a gun. I like, I, I, yesterday I did an interview. Uh, did you ever watch the Sopranos? Uh, I saw a few episodes. Remember Drea and, yeah, and, and Ad Adriana, it, Christopher's yeah. uh, wife, Christopher. She, uh, is doing a podcast, a, a Sopranos rewatch podcast with her friend, Chris Kushner. It's called Made Women. <laughs> And uh, she just started it. So it's just everybody can watch The Sopranos now. It's free on HBO. Oh, okay. You don't have to have an HBO subscription. People are rewatching. And so they're rewatching with this podcast. And Adriana will walk you through. Anyway, I, I talked to her yesterday. I'll have the interview tomorrow. It'll be our special Easter Sunday interview. There you go. So that'd be fun. Anyway, who should I uh, start this show How about with? Linda and Tepatchy? How about <laughs> poor Linda's been waiting? Hi, Linda. You're very Hi. patient. Thank you, Kim. What can I do for you today? Okay, well, I, I do a lot of scrapbooking and genealogy research, and I have a ton of photos that I'm working on scanning into digital format. Isn't that but, fun? That's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. No. Oh. <laughs> I, I have an office jet 8600 now, one of those three-in-one, you know, but it's so tedious and time-consuming. Yeah. We want in time. So I'm wondering if you could recommend a good scanner that's not super expensive, but that would scan uh, or that would feed in the pictures, different sizes. Yes. I have it right here. Okay. It's, our, it's not cheap. Um, oh. That's the only problem, but it's the best way to do this because what you're talking about is a feed and you need a feed that's designed for photos because photos are funny. They're thick. You know, they're sometimes up a right. bent corner and stuff. Um, it's the Epson... They're a sponsor, Fast Photo Scanner, F-O-T-O. And it's designed to do exactly this. It's a high-speed photo scanner. It can do other scanning, too. But one of the nice things it does is it does both sides. So if there's a lot of times you have notes written on the back of these photos, you don't want to lose those. Right. Uh, so it'll scan both sides. It scans it at high quality, and it does it really fast, about one photo a second, because of this sheet feeder. Wow. So, but it's like 500 bucks. Okay, okay. But it's worth it because otherwise, as you can tell, it's very slow. The other thing sometimes people do is they set up an easel and their camera, if you have a good quality camera, yeah. get the lighting right. And then you can do a pretty quick snap it, put another one on, snap it, put another one on. It's still tedious. And you don't get the back unless you make sure to do the back. And So that's another way to go, the more manual way. But if you want to do it, like if you have thousands of photos, like a shoebox. I, I do, more yeah, than that. Probably. More than that. Yeah, This I think this would be... And you would be so glad you have all this now. Oh, and yeah. Put it in the family trees and everything and all the notes on the back. Yeah, Epson Fast Photo. Again, they're a sponsor, but I actually have and use it, and um, I'm very, very happy with it. About If you shop around, about 500 bucks. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, Scott Wilkinson, home theater hey, geek. Hey, Leo, how you doing? I would guess quarantine's not so bad for a home theater geek. <laughs> no, it's not, you know? I mean... Uh, I've I've worked from home for the last 30 years, so yeah. it's not really that different for me. Um, and I've got my nice home theater, and I watch a lot of stuff. But I remembered what we were mentioning last week about what what are some good low cost uh, TVs and and sound bars that people might get now while they need to stay in. Right. And right. so I did some some research on this, and I found some some pretty interesting stuff. I tried to stick around five hundred bucks or less. Nice, that's a good and that's a good price point. I thought so. Yeah. And uh, Digital Trends Best TV under five hundred bucks, as at which wasn't any surprise, is the TCL R six twenty five series, the R six or my the six series. My mom is surrounded now by TCLs. I was doing TCLs. Vizios. But yeah. uh, we now are because they have Roku built in, which is really right. nice. Exactly. And I wanted to also focus on TVs that had good streamer capabilities built into them. I mean, you can get an external streamer and it's not that much, you know, maybe 50 to 100 bucks. But, you know, if you have it in your TV, at least at, in these days and you want to save as much money as you can, this is a good way to do it. So the TCL 55 R625 is uh, 500 bucks on Amazon. Nice. 55 and inches is a good size, too. It's not bad. Yeah. Not bad. If you want to go bigger, you can get the 65-incher for 750 That's That's more money. Um, 
And the other Roku TV that I wanted to mention is Hisense. We've talked about Hisense on the show. Another Chinese company. Another Chinese company. They've got a 55 and a 65. They're 50 bucks less than the TCLs in each case. Uh, but they have fewer uh, local dimming zones. We've talked about local dimming where the backlight behind the LCD panel where the actual picture is made dims and brightens in different zones, giving you a better sense of contrast, better picture quality overall. Uh, and the Hisense uh, models have half the number of zones that the TCLs do. So if you can spend the extra 50 bucks, I do recommend the uh, TCLs. Now, in terms of uh, 65 incher, the best I found was a Vizio, the Vizio M658, uh, 600 bucks mm. on the Vizio website. Mm. For a 65 incher, 90 lo local dimming zones and quantum dot color, which is really, really good. Do you think, now, now, in terms of quality, is Vizio mm -hmm. still a little better than, say, TCL or Hisense? Or are they all I roughly would, equal now? I would say they're roughly equal. Uh, uh, the Vizio is better because of these quantum dot, this quantum dot thing, uh, which does give you better, more saturated colors. Yeah. Um, and, and the cool thing about Vizio is that during the pandemic, during this crisis, they're offering a bunch of free TV streaming apps, uh, something like free 30 free linear TV channels on, on their platform. Now, oh, they're not nice. Roku. They're, you know, they're their own platform, See, which some people like. That's what I'm not like crazy about because I. No, I, I, I agree. Yeah. But do you I think agree, the smart cast is OK? Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. It's okay. It's, I don't like it as well as Roku. I uh, will admit that. I feel like Roku's kept up to date better. They have. They have. And they're more uh, widespread across all the different uh, uh, apps that, that you can get. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so now the Vizio M series comes in several sub-series, and I want to make sure people understand that. Uh, there's an M, there's two numbers that indicate the screen size, five, five, six, five, and then there's an eight or a seven or a six. And the eight is the one I, I, I'm recommending. The How seven is still is pretty that? good. That's it's so, so confusing. confusing. I know, I know. Um, anyway, so, uh, if you get something lower than an eight, you're going to, you're going to get, you're going to cost less, but you're going to get less capability. And uh, in the case of the, uh, there's a V series as well, which is under the M and it's less money. And so that's good. Uh, but if you go down there pretty low within their sub series, you're not going to get any local dimming at all, which is unfortunate. That's not what I would recommend. Um, Artings, you know, the, the what, review site Artings.com, yeah, yeah, yeah. they, they do good TV I think it's reviews. like short for ratings. Yes, exactly. It's ratings without the A. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're also recommending the uh, Hisense uh, 55H8 and 65H8. The 55 is 380 bucks Yikes. at Best Buy. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now we're getting back to the old days. Yeah. <laughs> right? TVs used to yeah. be a few hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the high sense is, is that that's a that's a damn good deal. I feel like the Chinese folks like TCL and High Sense are just the Vizio did this too when they first came out. They're lowballing it so they can get the attention and get people to buy them, right. and then eventually they'll they'll raise the price, raise maybe raise the quality at the same time. Well, I don't know. Well, I'm sure they will raise raise the quality. I mean, this is what happens in the TV business. You know, the the as each year goes by, you get better and better quality for roughly the same amount of money, maybe right. a little more. Right. Um, but all these TVs that I've been talking about have high dynamic range, uh, Dolby Vision as a as a thing. So you know, they're it's pretty darn good. That's oh, nice. I also if if you really want to spend a little bit of money, the, there's a, a Vizio V series 43 inch for 280 bucks wow but really but really if you know the at the high sense at 380 you know the um, thing is and we i talk to people all the time who say i'm going to buy a 42 or a 43 inch mm -hmm. because we remember the old days of the you know the sony crt two yeah, yeah, tvs yeah. where 27 inches was like you have that a was big, huge. you have a big tv 32 inch if you were rich you yeah, could have a 32 yeah. inch. And part of the reason for that is the way tubes work, the bigger the front part, the longer the back part. So a 32 yep. inch Sony was like maybe two feet deep. It was huge. Yeah. 
And it weighed 300 pounds. <laughs> so they were really kind of physically limited to the size. Now, yeah. because they're flat screens, they can be bigger. Yep. So uh, while 43 sounds huge, and my mom, she keeps saying, don't send me these big TVs. And I say, mom, you're going to, and when she says you're big, it's like 55. It's not huge. Yeah. But she says, no, just send me a 42. And I say, no, mom, really. You'll be glad, and I haven't heard any complaints since she got it. So I think yeah. she's happy. People, want, you know, people. I hear that all the time. Yeah. People say, "Oh, you know, oh, I don't need a fifty-five. Oh, I don't need a sixty-five. That's so big." But then when they see it and they experience it and they live with it for a while, they go, "Oh, okay, now I get if it." If you're sitting pretty close, forty-two is fine. A lot of people don't have a lot of room if you're in an apartment. Sure, uh, forty-two sure. is fine, and it sure. is bigger than you're used to. But, right. but the thing these days is you can practically have a movie theater if you have 55-inch, 65-inch, 70-inch. You can really – it's a home theater now. That's exactly right, even if you don't set it up as a dedicated home theater. Yeah. And this is going to be really important because you know the movie distribution models are changing radically because of this. Movie theaters – movie chain – AMC is likely to go into bankruptcy oh, yeah, because yeah, of yeah. the – of the virus. They were kind of on a thin They were on a thin thread thin anyway. Thin ice anyway. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Now it's it's worse and they mm. they they could well go under. That my beloved Dolby Cinema gone. Oh man. So, that's that's tragic. It is. Cuz I totally think when tragic. this is over we're going to want to go back to the movies and be around people. We just we're going to we miss it, people so much. I think we're going to want I know. That. I know. And yet it, it I think that's going to be a while. Mm. Before we we can really do that, wow. pack into you know theaters and concerts and no, stuff it's going like to be a, yeah, I think a year at least. Yeah, mm -hmm. Scott Wilkinson, he's our home theater geek. You can find his work at TechHive.com. He joins us every week to talk about TV, surround sound, all that stuff. And um, we will take a little break. Come back with more of your calls. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. Right after this. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. There's so much good TV on now that uh, yeah, you know what's I had, nobody's talked about this, but there's going to be a dearth of it in about I don't know what is it six months That's to a right. year because they're not Cause doing there's anything. No production, and uh, and so enjoy it now because you're going to be watching reruns in a year. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I couldn't believe this. There's a bunch of sports on. Which is from the last two or three years. They got to do something. What if you're they ESPN? What are you going to do? Right, right. Or MLB? I don't think it's fun. No, I don't either. I don't watch a game if I know what happened, uh, right. or, if it's, or if it's not important. You know, it's not. It's not a. It's not like you know. It's not relevant to the current season, which doesn't exist. The Major right. League Baseball was talking about. I hope they. I don't think they'll do this. Having a season in in Arizona, you saw that, right, 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 in the sp in the spring training grounds, and they'd all stay in a hotel, quarantine, no no fans, right. no in the stands. audience, yeah, 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 no fans. That's how desperate they are. I mean, yeah, they must be losing. Everybody must be losing. Everybody billions, is billions. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it's good for stuff like me because we we continue on, which means those ad dollars, they got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my my work. Honestly, has not been affected much at all. A, because I work at home anyway. I write. I send email articles by email to my to the outlets I write for. They publish them. Um, everybody works from home anyway. Yeah. So as long as people, as long as the advertisers have enough money to advertise, well, I, that's you know, you, what we've you experienced. You and I are good. We've but that's a number of advertisers have pulled out. We've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars because they're not, you know. <laughs> they're not they themselves selling. are having big they're trouble. They're not selling. Yeah. Nobody's buying a mattress. <laughs> right. right. So or maybe they are. I don't know. But they 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 really don't want to spend that money. They're really nervous about it. So yeah, we've already seen. But then there's advertisers, work from home advertisers and stuff. Who say, oh, this is a big opportunity for us. So yep. I'm hoping yep. that we it, what will happen is you know the old guys are leaving, but maybe we can get we're we got a sales team that bust in their butts trying to get you know find somebody to replace them. Otherwise, we'd have to. I don't know what we'd do. We'd have to close the doors if we don't. We've always. It's always been the case that if the audience went away or the advertisers went away, it's not like Either we way. could just keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't just keep going. We, somebody got to pay for all this expensive gear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Doctor Mom, Grandma has a great joke. 
They're doing national origami competition this week on pay-per-view. Pay-per-view. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> pay-per-view i've seen there's a woman who's an origami guru who makes a uh sewingless uh, mask origami mask which is oh an origami cool. mask That's yeah isn't that cool looks oh smart. and there's a new saturday night live tonight uh, yeah doing doing Remote. skits from home that's i'll be, be i'll tune into oh, that it's gonna be painful <laughs> you know either that or it's gonna be brilliant you don't know if if they're uh smart they won't try to do what they normally do they'll they'll you know because there's been instagram people who've just taken off because they've always done stuff in their closet. And right. so it's just a natural, you know, this is, <laughs> oh, we know how to do, you know, low end, you know, TikTok stars going crazy, going through the roof because they know how yeah. to do it that way. Yeah. But I don't know if you get these TV people, sometimes these TV people, they, they just, well, I don't know. Fallon's done all right from home. Yeah. It was Colbert's done all right from home. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. John Krasinski, the, the uh, guy in uh, the office, who, I love him. Uh, he started a YouTube channel two weeks ago. More than a million subscribers like that. Wow. Yeah. All right. Can you stay to the top? You betcha. All right. Talk to you in a minute. Well, yep. 15. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Your tech guy. 8888. Ask Leo if you've got any questions. Want to know anything. 888-827-5536. Dan in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Hi, Dan. Hey, how you doing? I'm great. Welcome. Hey, thanks. Um, I got a quick question uh, regarding uh, wireless routers and the distance to my TVs. Yeah. So I've got a room, a detached room in the backyard, and my wireless router is in the living room, which is about 100, uh, about 100 feet mm. and two walls in between it. Ah, it's not good. I bet you don't have get it. Get, yeah, that but doesn't work too well. Okay. And I'm trying to power three TVs. For, uh, to use the DirecTV app on those three TVs. I kind of got it set up kind of like a sports bar. Nice. Um, but, but it's yeah, not working well. DirecTV this year. No. There, so, suggestions? Yeah, so nominally Wi-Fi goes around 150 feet, but that's if there's that's if if there's nothing in between. Like there's the router and 150 feet down in a feet in a football field, there's the there's the TV. That works pretty well, but that's about the limit. Um, right. but so you're right at the limit of that. And then you have stuff in between. So wall, two walls is, is, is the limit right there. Boom. Uh, people are bad too. So you might be able to improve things by moving the router higher up so that people don't impinge, but those, it's those walls and it depends what the walls are made of. If they're just drywall, and there's no metal in them, maybe just drywall and studs. That's not so bad. If there's metal in it of any kind, you're, you're dead. So you're, okay. so you're, you're kind of striking out twice here. You got two, it's so far and there's so much in between it. What I would try almost always what I like to do if I'm going to have, um, a home theater setup is wired, if you can possibly do it. The problem is that cable modem or DSL modem arrives through the wall at a specific spot. It may not be the place you want to watch TV. It's not where your bar is. So how do you solve this? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. But ideally, you'd get it wired. The, 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 le the least best way to do it, but it's worth a try, one of these mesh routers. What mesh routers do is they allow you to extend the Wi-Fi out and they have a high-speed back channel between them. I use, for this example, uh, Netgear Orbi, fairly expensive. But one of the things it has is a very fast back channel so and, the, and a powerful back channel. And it has Ethernet at each satellite. So you can then have the Ethernet plug the TV into it. So that's what I'm doing in one of the, my TVs. And that works pr better than it would be if the TV was just Wi-Fi. So that's one way to do it. But that's still Wi-Fi, and those walls are still going to get in the way, and the distance is still going to get in the way. The idea, though, you put the satellites kind of halfway and that kind of thing. Another way to do it is wired. And there, there are ways to do this wired. There's actually three ways. One, of course, you could put Ethernet down. <laughs> that's, you know, that's a problem. Unless you can get under, if there's a crawl space under the house, that wouldn't be so bad. Go down, underneath, and up. Uh, you could, sometimes you can go through, you know, there's ways to do this. I actually had an ethernet wire for a while outside my window <laughs> going around. Uh, it was in the, you know, the uh, garbage alley where nobody would go except to empty the garbage. So that, that was a okay solution, but maybe you want to do something a little nicer. You already have wires in the wall. There's two wires in the wall. Most people have coaxial cable from your cable installation and your power lines. And actually power line networking might be the best solution for you. The idea is at the at the router, 
at the cable modem, you plug a thing into the wall, you plug an Ethernet cable from the cable modem into that, then at the other end by the TVs, you plug another thing into the wall and then a, an Ethernet cable into that, and you're using the grid, the electrical grid, as like a, a cable. And it can do this because it has filtering and it sits above the power so the power doesn't interfere with it. It's not as fast as Ethernet, but for most people that'll work. And so that's a so TP Link is a company that makes these. They're, that's the ones I've used. It's called Powerline Networking. Not super expensive. That might give you a better result. The only negative, if there's a junction box, if it's not a straight line, straight shoot from the where the router is to the where the TVs are, that that'll get in the way. You don't want a junction box or a fuse box in between. But for most houses, you have one fuse box in the garage. And everything else is kind of direct. So that's something to look at, too. I really think power line networking. For the cable wires, there's something called Mocha, M-O-C-A. But the same thing. You have to have a Mocha adapter at each end. And then you can do it that way. I think, um, I honestly think for you, of all those solutions, the least expensive, most effective would be power line networking. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, that's a tough one. There's a great article, and we'll put a link in the show notes by my friend Jim Salter at uh, Ars Technica on how to improve Wi-Fi reception. Uh, and he talks a lot about all of the things that, are, that make it hard for Wi-Fi. You know, we have congestion from neighbors. We have lots of devices now, dozens of devices. You know, if you add the doorbells and the echoes and all that stuff on the single Wi-Fi connection, we have walls, doors, humans. There's a lot of things that impede on Wi-Fi these days. He's got a good article uh, about how to, you know ways to optimize it. But at some point, Wi-Fi just isn't going to make it. It's not. You're just going to have to get it wired. That's always the best way, especially for home entertainment, home theater. Uh, always best if you can. Our show today brought to you by Remote PC. Companies, as you know, everybody's working from home. They're going fully remote. Remote PC is the easiest, most secure, fastest way to do remote networking. You can, and it's nice because it works on Macs and Windows. So you can have a Windows PC at work. You can get online with your Mac, even with your iPad or iPhone, because it works with mobile devices, too. It's secure. It's fast. You can upload and download files. You can run programs. It's really, frankly, it's just like you're sitting in front of your computer at work, except you're not. You're home. Plants, it's very affordable. Plants start at less than 6 bucks a month for up to 10 computers. I've been using remote PC for years. It is a great solution and much more secure than, say, Windows Remote Desktop Protocol, which has constantly seems to have, you know, security exploits, not remote PC. Use the promo code LEO at checkout. You'll get our special offer. I said six bucks a month, but how about 90% off for your first year? It's a ch chance to try remote PC at a, at a time when you really need it. PC Magazine gave them four stars. They said remote PC is effortless with a simple interface and learning curve, fast performance. And users can easily transfer files between local and remote desktops. Remote PC, I love it. RemotePC.com. Use my name, Leo. 90% off for the first year, just in the nick of time for, for your work-from-home solution. RemotePC.com. Mark in Roseville, California. Hi, Mark. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yes, hello. I uh, have an interesting question to me. Uh, my mother-in-law, she's completely with it for her age, but... She's uh, losing some vision, and she still does email. Is nice. there software or an app or anything that would read the emails to her? Oh, wouldn't that be cool? What what uh, kind of device is she using? She has a Dell laptop. It's okay. less than two years old. Yeah. Windows does this automatically. Um, it has a, a what we call a text-to-speech converter. So, uh, and what does she use for her email? Well, I'm, uh, Gmail. I mean, Gmail. So she's in the browser. Yes. Okay. Let me and just. One of her daughters lives with her, so it it, it she, they're pretty up on things. Yeah. So it's uh, it's in the um, let's see. So Windows settings or yeah. Um, Let's see. There's a number of ways to do this. You can, you know, there's actually, maybe this would be the easiest. If she uses the Chrome browser, which okay. is the best for Gmail anyway, there is something called, it's a um, Chrome extension called Read Aloud. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
And it might be easier for her to do that. There is, in the accessibility settings on Windows, there's a text-to-speech feature. But it, it's really more for blind users, and it's probably... I think something that's designed to do this might be a little bit better. So, But there's certainly... It, Windows comes with it. It's built in, and it's in the accessibility setting. You can just try that at first. Do you have a Windows machine at home? Personally, yes. Yeah, so so the first thing to do, not to impose this on your mom until you got it all worked out, is to okay. try it yourself. So go into your Windows machine, uh, use Gmail, and uh, and use the built-in accessibility. You'll hear what it does. Some of the reading is is a lot of extra stuff. Because <laughs> it has, and like you'll hear a lot of HTTPS colon slash slash. You'll hear a lot of that. Uh, but you'll get used to it. Um, and certainly for blind users, this is very, very popular. Take, take a look at Read Aloud. If she's using Microsoft Edge, uh, which is the browser, you can update her browser. They're not yet shipping it automatically, but it's a, it's a newer version of Edge has, is based on Chromium. And I believe it has the Read Aloud feature available to it, too. So you don't have to use Google Chrome. Dude, just simply Google Read Aloud? Uh, yeah, if you Google read aloud a text-to-speech voice reader, you'll see the extension on the Chrome extension. You can read about it. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it, there's it's a few bucks. It's cheap. And I think it's a better, probably a better solution. But as I said, what I would do first is try the free one built into Windows. You'll understand what I'm talking about when you try it. You'll see you get a lot of extra stuff. It's a little more complicated for her to use. Read aloud might be a lot simpler. You just click a button. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. More to come right after this. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I give you Scott Olkinson. Well, I'm going to get you all set up. Wait a minute. That's not you. Where are you? There you are. <laughs> there I is. There you are. And I'll get your clock, click clock going here in a second. Oh, click clock. Tick tock. Very Tick -tock, nice. Tick tock, click clock. Let's get that out of the way. By the way, uh, uh, Tom, a... a Longtime viewer, listener, um, just sent me an email asking me about the masks that I found on Etsy. And so I wanted to give a shout out to uh, the the account there on Etsy is called Glorious Creations. And nice. The woman's, the woman's name is Gloria. But you'll find just, a million masks. Oh, you'll find a million yeah. of them. Because a, a lot of seamstresses, me, this is a great opportunity for them. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I look and I looked at a million of them. And I even got a couple of other ones. You know, I, I tried a few, you know, ordered like one or two just to see if they would work. Most of them are too small for me. Yeah. Um, and and despite your uh, your good intentions in recommending that I shave off my beard, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> no, I know. I, I haven't shaved this beard. The last time I shaved this beard off was 1977. And that was because I tried to trim it myself and it failed miserably. <laughs> no, so no, just, keep it. It's your it's your best attribute, Scott. Thank you. Thank so you. So keep it and just, uh, yeah, I would. But these masks that I found uh, from, from Glorious Creations uh, are really big. They're huge. That's what you need. And they're, and they're pleated. So, you, you know, you can, you can expand them and they're big enough that, you know, they fit around my large head and uh, the, the elastic seems very sturdy. Um, I asked them about washing them and they said, oh yeah, put them in the washer at hot. No problem. Dry them. No problem. I mean, they'll degrade over time, but, um, for a while they'll, they'll last and they, they do me very well. Now I have not yet found a mask that doesn't fog up my glasses. That's a problem. Yeah, me too. And, yeah. You know, I don't know what, I don't know the solution to that. Um, because so what I do is when I'm out, I don't wear it while I'm driving because I'm in my car, right? So no problem there. But when I get out of the car to go into the store or whatever, I'll put it on and I'll just walk around with fog glasses. It's got to be a I solution. Can. We'll find a way. I'm going to, I'm definitely working on this. I'm going to become a master of mask technology. Ah, uh, the mask master. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. Maybe, uh, some see if you put a vent in them though that defeats the purpose you know you could put some sort of vent in the top that that caused your breath to go down instead of up uh maybe 
but then you you've got a hole in your mask. Somebody, some a couple of people have said to me, "Hey, how do you play tuba in a mask?" Well, you don't obviously. <laughs> Um, which I am still trying to do, play play tuba every day, at least by myself, just to keep my chops up, you know? Dr. Mom Grandma says, the glass is fogging because there are no nose clips. If you want your glasses to fog, do what scuba divers do, split your lenses and rub it with saliva. Yeah, well, maybe. Um, spit on the lenses. That's not split, spit on the lenses. Yeah, no, I don't think, I mean, I, I probably won't do that. Uh, theater glue to cheeks, mm, maybe that. Um, but Jim Four, yeah, he gets his glasses get all fogged up. Everybody's does. It's a problem. Now, have you have you, some of you had any uh, breathing problems? My wife complains about having uh, make be it being more difficult to breathe wearing the mask, and I haven't found that to be terribly true. Um, but she's much more sensitive to breathing even than I am, being that she's a speech pathologist and that's her business. Uh, Jammer B says, I found that if I put my glasses a forward a bit on my nose, it minimizes the fog. Well, that's a good idea, uh, except for the fact, for me, that my glasses that I wear outside have cable temples. And so I can't push them forward. And the reason I wear cable temples is so that they won't fall forward. <laughs> now it's now it's uh, acting at cross purposes to what I need. Um, so maybe I'll just have to wear my non cable temple glasses when I go out and push them down on my nose because I think uh, Jammer B, you're right. That's probably a good way to do it. Um, Doctor Mom Grandma says yes. They, they you have to get used to breathing with a mask. They do affect airflow. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. Um. I also, Desert Moon says, I find I have to take deep breaths often on my walks. Yeah, that's exactly right. I have not yet chosen to wear a mask while walking out in the neighborhood because I don't get near anybody. And when somebody comes down the street, I move well before I'm well before I'm six feet away from them. So I, I really don't see the necessity for, for wearing them while you're just walking around the neighborhood when you're not in any proximity to anybody. I do think it's important in a store or uh, anything like that, but, uh, you know, out on a walk, I, I don't worry about it. <clears throat> so, uh, we, we, uh, didn't, I, I, maybe I'll save this for next week. Um, well, that's a good, uh, I, I was going to also talk about sound bars. I, I came up with some good Vizio sound bars, but, um, I'll save that for next week. Because, you know, when you buy a TV for 600 bucks or 500 bucks uh, or less, uh, that's great. Um, and the ones I recommended, you'll get a good picture quality, but uh, you won't get good sound. And you'll have streaming in them. So that's another savings that you won't have to buy a separate streamer, but you won't get good sound. So I do recommend getting a sound bar. And, and uh, Vizio has some great ones at, you know, I looked at their lower end, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll talk about that next week. I think that's a good Part two, uh, Dr. Mom Grandma says, not a good idea. You need to get used to wearing them all the time or you'll forget. Yeah, I, I see that argument, but I'm going to try to. Uh, oh, I see your argument, but I'm still not going to wear it while I I'm honestly think that after this is over, everyone's going to wear masks. All the time? All the time. Because <laughs> it defeats <laughs> face recognition, for one thing. So it gives you well, privacy. Well, that's, you know, that's a good point. Yeah, I have a feeling and, it's the next thing. <laughs> and they've been doing it. They've been doing it in China and Japan uh, yeah. for years, yeah. Yeah. years and years. Yeah. So I have a feeling we're going to see this isn't going to go away. So you might as well get used to it. Right. Right. Until we have a vaccine, which isn't going to be for. Yeah, but even uh, then, I think people are going to still do it because of flu and other things. Because, and colds. Yeah, 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 yeah. And as you say, face recognition and privacy. I love seeing the newscasters wearing masks. <laughs> that's that's always kind of fun. And the weather people from their homes. That's great. Uh, we have a weather guy here on Channel 2. We usually watch Channel 2 uh, CBS News. And the weather guy has a giant St. Bernard and he's usually with his St. Bernard out in his front lawn. Um, <clears throat> yes, Eric Duckman. After this is over, everyone is going to wear masks all the time. Make note of that. 
Eric just wants to give me a hard time when everybody doesn't do it. He's, mm. That's all. He's just saying, make note of Leo's prediction so we can tell him how wrong he was. <laughs> I'm going to wear them all the time. You are? Yeah. What, if I'm sick or whatever. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. sure. I don't even think if I'm not sick. It's good. It defeats face recognition. It's going to be a fashion statement. Hmm. It'll be like a necktie. I've, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I've Thank certainly. You, All right. Have a great See you next day. Week. All right. You too. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches. Zoom, 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number, 888-827-5536, toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Zoom is getting such a bad rap. We've been talking about it, I talked about it last week. It's the, Everybody's using it. It's a great teleconferencing solution because it's so easy to use. And it's how we're now talking with family and friends. Uh, people are having book groups. They're having uh, religious uh, services. Via Zoom. Scott was talking about how he had a Zoom Seder with more than 50 people. The only bad thing about a Zoom Seder is you can't all sing because it's all, <laughs> it doesn't work. So you had to take turns singing. But at the same time, NASA bans Zoom, SpaceX bans Zoom. Zoom has just been banned by Google from employees' computers because uh, of security issues. Now, of course, Google makes a competing product, Google Hangouts, and so, or it's I guess it's Hangouts Meet. Now, to Zoom's credit, I think they've taken this seriously because they see a huge opportunity here. They've always made it, you know, their priority has not been security. It's been ease of use. And as I've talked about before, there's, there's always a trade-off between ease of use and security. You know, more secure means usually harder to use and vice versa. But they've, they've, they've gotten serious about this. Uh, they've hired uh, a guy named Alex Stamos. Now, if you're, if you're a security buff, you'll know that name. He used to be head at security uh, of, of Facebook. Quit when he learned about Cambridge Analytica. Said, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm not going to work for this company. Uh, he's very well known, very respected. And he said that uh, the um, CEO of Zoom, when this all broke... You know, real, Eric Yuan realizing when, uh, you know, that here's an opportunity for Zoom, but at the same time, he's getting a lot of bad press, came to Stamos and said, help us, which I am, to me, is very good sign. That means, now, if they listen to him anyway, that means this is a company who understands they didn't do security so well. They prioritized ease of use, but now they realize it's important. And I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. I think because it is so easy to use, we still use it in, at work for sales conferences, you know, where you're pitching. It's just easy. I set up, uh, you know, there's an open source free program. I've mentioned it before called Jitsi, J-I-T-S-I. -S -S -I. It's jitsi.org. And you can use it for free. You can use it for conferencing for free. And I think it does a very good job. I think it's, e I, in my opinion, it's as easy, but because it's new, it's got some different buttons and stuff, and so people have to learn something new. Uh, it's also because it's open source, no one, you, you can use the Jitsi servers, but you don't have to. In fact, I set up my own server at home. It was easy to do. If you have a little experience with Linux and, and running a server, it's not a hard thing to do. And uh, I've been using it with my family. In fact, uh, I've, I explained how to use it to my mom, 87. She figured it out. She can use it now. It has a custom domain name. It's as easy to go into a Zoom uh, meeting. You know, you have to click the link, install the software if you don't already have it. Zoom meetings are long, unmemorable numbers. With Jitsi, uh, you don't need to install anything. It just uses the browser. The software is already in the browser. It's nothing special. It's something called WebRTC that, that Chrome supports. Most browsers support just fine. And you can just go, I created a, a custom URL, you know, went and bought a URL for it. And uh, you can just create, uh, you know, myjitsimeeting.com slash family meeting or talking to mom, whatever you want to call it. It's easy for her to remember. She types it in the browser. It's a snap. So I, st and because you control the server, if you set it up this way, and it, uh, most people won't, I understand it's more complicated, but even I trust Jitsi. Even if you're going through the Jitsi server, it is more secure because partly because it's less used. 
But I do want to say, I want to give Zoom some credit. They've made all the right moves. They've taken the right steps. And I feel like Zoom is going to be, uh, in time, as secure and easy to use. But it is interesting. New York City schools banned it. They were using it. They're going to use uh, Google instead, Google Meet. So it is starting, I think, to look kind of grim for G for uh, Zoom. But I, I kind of want to say, hey, wait a minute now. These guys, this you know, this is a different world they're in, and they, I think they're making the right moves. I, I feel like it anyway. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo the phone number. Back to the phones. Line three. It's Julian in Los Angeles. Hi, Julian. Hey, Leo. We've hey, talked Lee. to Julian many times before. He helps people with low or no vision uh, navigate the world. Yes, and I put together a resource that I want to share with people who are blind or low vision, and that is a collection of resources that I've put together. So instead of having to jump around the Internet looking for this stuff, I'm going to put the, I have a page and I'm going to be modifying it and taking input and stuff like that to make it better and better. Excellent. Because I get a lot of questions from people about this stuff. Yeah. So um, the way you get to it is you go to my website, which is www.techjv.com. That's T-E-C-H, J as in John, V as in Victor, dot com. And you look for a link that says COVID-19 slash coronavirus resources for blind or low vision. One of the nice things, of course, Julian does is his page is accessible, so if you're using a screen reader, uh, it's going to be easy yeah, to do this. It's not uh, it's not flashy, it's not pretty to look at necessarily, but it does right. the job, and it's for, it's for the community that it's intended to exactly, serve, exactly. which I am part of. So I, yeah. I live it, so I make it. So if I that's great. If I can if I can't use it, then I want to make sure that people can. Well, it's got to be hard if you're blind or have low vision. That just adds one more burden to this whole quarantining thing. Uh, and if you have to quarantine alone, it makes it even harder. So I'm really glad that uh, you can do that. There's an you have an accessible statistics tracker there, uh, the LA uh, Los Angeles County critical delivery service information, Social Security, IRS. I love this blind bargains. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they not only put news and things related to blind, but they also have a good deal that show up in places like that. So it's a lot of fun stuff. You know, the the blind statistic tracker particularly, you know, we keep hearing that term flatten the curve, flatten the curve. Well, that's all represented graphically in the news. A blind right. person has, who's never seen curves or, or, or graphs or things like that has no idea what this means. So this is uh, putting this in text form so that you can get it non-visually. So the stuff like that, the, the Social Security stuff is important because the, this payment that's coming out and a lot of confusion surrounding it because, you know, the government understandably so rushes it out to get it to people and um, sometimes uh, stuff gets lost in the cracks. So they put together these websites. I put the links directly to them so people don't have to go Googling and going crazy over it. I've also put stuff there to help people who are, uh, you know, uh, educating at home or working from home. Uh, including some free ebooks, one of which uh, in particular uh, helps people to understand the Zoom platform. And it's written by a guy named Jonathan Mosin out of New Zealand who's blind. And he, uh, he breaks this down in very simple to understand terms so that blind people who have to now learn how to use Zoom can do this. And he's made his ebook available for free. And that's there for download. There's other ebooks there as well that are useful for this time. And I've even put at the bottom there entertainment, uh, something that gives a listing of all the programming available on TV, on the Internet, and even on DVD that has audio description. So, you know, if you need to be entertained or you got kids at home that need to be entertained, all this stuff is there. And I'm going to add to it as time goes on. I put my link on that page. So if somebody has something that they think should be added, just click that link and email it to me. And I'll just keep uh, adding it and making it more useful. Bless you, Julian. That's just fantastic. Techjv.com. Did you hear the last call uh, last hour? Uh, the older woman have a hard time seeing. She wanted a way uh, to make it easier to uh, get her email by reading Gmail out loud. Now, I know uh, people in the blind community typically will use screen readers like JAWS, but is there a built-in way in Windows that she can do that that makes it pretty easy? 
Yeah, I believe Narrator probably has stuff like that. I, I like the, the resource you gave with that uh, the read aloud thing. The plug in, yeah. Um, if she wants to, and anybody wants to, you know, if you got questions like that, I'm happy to answer those questions. My contact info is on that web page. You know, I'll, I'll I'll give it my best shot, and or at least you know if I can't answer it, maybe point you in the direction of where you can get the answers. Julian, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for what you do. Likewise, I think it really helps people. Techjv.com. Thank you, Julian. Sure. Take, take, take care. It. Have a great day, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Today, we're brought to you by Simply Safe. With all the uncertainty in the world, it's so important that we feel safe at home. And that's what Simply Safe is here to do for you Simply Safe Home Security. It's the one I use, the one I recommend. It is awesome. Our longtime friends, uh, I've been recommending Simply Safe for years. It's really great for anybody who wants a good home security system at a very affordable price and wants the 24 7 monitoring. So if something happens, the police come quickly. In fact, Simply Safe, on average, police come a lot faster because Simply Safe has a really great way for them to verify it's not a false alarm. With Simply Safe cameras and motion detectors, the police can actually say, oh yeah, there's somebody in there. We're on our way. So they respond much faster to a call from Simply Safe. US News and World Report said Simply Safe is the best overall home security for 2020. I'll tell you why I like it. Uh, there's no technician, no salesperson that needs to come and disrupt your house. Nowadays, you don't want anybody coming to your house. Just go to the Simply Safe website, pick the sensors that you need, and they have them all glass break, motion detectors, door and window opening. They even have carbon monoxide, water leakage detectors. It's very easy to set it up. The base station is fantastic, it is so robust. It can't be destroyed by a baseball bat or anything. And they come with 24 7 monitoring for about a third the cost of the other guys. No contract either. At just about 50 cents a day. Set yourself up in an hour. You don't need anybody coming to your house. It's all peel and stick, which, by the way, means it's easy to take with you. Renters love Simply Safe. You know, I think a lot of times a renter feels like, oh, I can't have home security. I'm not, I don't own. No, you can and you should. And you should have Simply Safe. No outrageous monthly fees, no two year contracts, nobody traipsing through your house. You can order it all online. Simply Safe. Dot com slash twit. You'll get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial if you go to simplysafe.com slash twit. I think it's so important to feel safe in your home. You know you, you'd want that, and you want that for your family, for your kids. Uh, and so I think you really ought to get this. Simplysafe.com slash twit. Make sure you use that address so they know that you heard it here. From Simply Safe and, of course, all of us at The Tech Guy. We wish you a safety and good health. SimplySafe.com slash twit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. And Wayne is on the line from Irvine, California. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Leo. I'm great. How are you? How are you feeling in this oh, difficult well, time? Good, but the businesses I work on are kind of stuffed. We, we're, my wife and I are Antarctic expedition guides and small oh. expedition ships. Oh. So um, and then we work in the Arctic, and right now, I don't know if you heard, but for the summer, Canada has shut down all of northern Canada. So we're supposed to do the Northeast Passage or the Northwest Passage, and that's gone. And um, so you do Arctic, yeah, or home, you, do the, you do the you do the you do the North Pole. Yeah. Oh North man, Pole. how fun! Oh. You know, I wanted to do a Northwest Passage cruise. It's funny that you say that. On uh, Silver Sea, I was looking at that. It goes from uh, Greenland all the way to uh, I, Alaska. And I thought it would be so cool to do that. That's going to be a few years. Yes, yeah, so you're going to have to, boy, what do you do? Do you go on a boat? How do you do it? Yeah, we work for a company, a uh, Norwegian company called Hurtigruten. Oh, I've yeah. been on the Hurtigruten. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went from uh, uh, Christiansund to uh, Bergen on the Hurtigruten. That Isn't is that great. Yeah, that's fun. And of course, they would do Northwest Passage cruises. Yeah, huh? We love Norwegians and a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. And uh, so, anyhow, when we're out on the ship, which is good, happening right now, we, my wife and I do school assemblies. In fact, we were just up in your area 
a couple months ago, Petaluma and Santa Rosa and Willits. But uh, we also do libraries, but of course that's shut down. But I just got uh, contact from the library, some libraries back in the East Coast wanting us to do like a, a, um, like a webinar sort of program for them. And that's what I'm working on developing. So I've Perfect. looked at Zoom, and that looks pretty user-friendly. But I want to may have good audio, so I want to see about my audio options. Uh, my wife and I wear clip-on Shure wireless microphones. I want to see if I can plug those directly into my... Um, MacBook Pro with a mixer. You a bet. Silver. You bet. So uh, this is actually um, one of the nice things about Zoom. It has that built-in recording, local recording feature. So it's an easy thing to do to record your Zoom webinar, and it'll do whatever audio you're putting into the Mac. I okay. when, when I'm uh, connecting to my Mac um, from uh, – uh, I use I bring home my radio microphone. I could actually do this show from my Mac – uh, using a high-quality microphone. You could use your lavs, whatever it is you like. And an interface. Now, the one I use is from a company. It's expensive, but it's really good. It's from a company called um, Sound Devices, and it's called the Mix Pre. You don't need something that elaborate, but if you, but this is the, this is the champagne of USB interfaces. Uh, so we also use, when we send microphones to our um, hosts, you know, People like uh, Scott Wilkinson and uh, Sam Abul Samad, uh, when they're doing the show, they are using professional radio microphones that we send them, hooked up to a, something from Focusrite called a Scarlet. And that will also take a standard microphone. Your uh, your um, lavaliers are professional grade. They have, uh, yeah. yeah. So you have a one of those Canon plugs, an XLR plug, that you would normally plug into a mixer. You don't need a mixer. Well, the mix, here's the thing. The, the Scarlet has knobs on it, and you can look at the Focusrite Scarlets, and they have multiple endpoints. Uh, the nice thing about the Mix Pre is it really has good quality. It will record locally, uh, but it's much more expensive than a, a Focusrite. So those are your two choices. Focusrite Scarlet, we use that all the time and have good results with it. It's simpler and less expensive. The Mix Pre from sounddevices.com. Uh, it, it has all sorts of additional features, including you can have three, four, or eight microphones. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you and your wife would each be on mic. Right. Yeah. I can't remember. If, I bet you Focusrite has a two-mic setup. Okay. Now, can I plug, uh, like, a, uh, a Canon uh, video camera into my computer? And, you bet. And Okay. That's another thing I do. Although you don't need a Canon video camera, what you need to do is convert the output from a video recorder of any kind into something that the computer sees as a webcam. Now, if the what I use at home, and again, I, I'm doing a kind of a semi-pro version of this, so I'm using the, the Sound Devices Mix Pre, and what I use at home is $300. It's a great device. It's, uh, uh, it's from Blackmagic, which makes incredibly good stuff. It's called their ATEM, A-T-E-M, Mini. And what it does, it'll take your camcorder output, any HDMI, it'll take four of them, plug it into that. It's a switcher. It has picture in picture, has a lot of nice features. It'll kind of spiff up your video production. You know, it's, it's like a, it's a physical hardware switcher, kind of like you would use... Uh, at a TV studio, but it's a $300 version of it. It does a great job, in my opinion. And it has an output, a USB output, that you plug into any computer, and the computer says, oh, it's a webcam. So it'll work with Zoom, it'll work with Skype, it'll work with anything that you're using that can see a webcam. So, oh, great. That sounds great. But, you know, th this is not cheap, and I know times are tight right now, So, but 300 bucks for a physical hardware mixer. And, you, and by the way, one of the things you can put as an input is your computer screen. So you put your computer screen into, say, Mix 4, so you've got you in uh, camera 1, your wife in camera 2, a two-shot in camera 3, and your computer in camera 4, and now you can have a real, you have a nice video production set up. It really is nice. There are software versions that will, will do the same thing. Ecamm makes a really excellent program that will do that. So you'll still, but you still need a hardware interface that takes the HDMI out of your camera and turns it into something that the ca that the computer thinks is a webcam. But if you go to Ecamm's website, E-C-A-M-M, -M, I'm giving you the the fancy way to do it and the less expensive way to do it. Ecamm is all in software, and they have in, uh, instructions on how to get it to work uh, with any camcorder on a Macintosh.
You just need yeah. a little bit of hardware interface for it. Great. Okay. Yeah, you can do as much as you want. I mean, this is what you're seeing. I mean, I, I essentially could do the same show I'm doing right now at home, and I set it up just in case we had to do that. Uh, and you, so the high end, and now we're talking, we're still under a thousand bucks, uh, minus the cameras is the USB pre, uh, mixer from sound devices and the A10 mini from black magic. The low M would be a focus right Scarlet two inputs for your microphones, Ecamm software, uh, on your Macintosh. And then you just need a hardware device that takes the HDMI out. Now the thing on the camcorder, the little trick on the camcorder is most of those cannons and most camcorders will go to sleep if you have a battery in it. Yeah. They're protecting the battery. Take the battery out, it'll stay on. But how do you power it? If you don't, we actually bought a little, uh, they make them a little, it looks like a battery, but it's got a plug in it. And you plug it in via the battery. And so there's tricks to keep that camcorder awake. And any it'll work with any camcorder that has live HDMI out. That's what you want, live HDMI out. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, Johnny Jet. Hello, Leo. It's a traveling man who's grounded. <laughs> I'm not a traveling man right now. He's I'm grounded. A consumer advocate right now. Yeah, and I I feel bad. By the way, I'm really pleased that the government told all the airlines you got to give the money back. Yes. So especially if we're going to bail you out, you got to give the money back. I got a call from my travel agent saying American Airlines is going to refund you. Uh, your uh, tickets to, because uh, we were going to go to uh, Germany in June, and uh, they're going to refund it, which I'm thrilled about because that was a lot of money. It was four of I us. I got to give credit to American. American, I usually rag on them, but they have actually been the best out of all the American, all the U.S. airlines, which is shocking to me. Hallelujah. United has been one of the worst. Air Canada is terrible, even though it's North American. And um, Do but, you think it's tied I'm, to their overall financial well, you know, well-being or... Is it just some of them are Scrooges? I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. But I mean, Delta has the has the best um, pocket, deepest pockets, and they were actually giving people actually they were really great in the beginning, and then they started getting tough, and now they're now they're going back to being a, a good again. Um, United took a huge hit. They're now um, refunding it after the DOT came out with this enforcement. But even foreign airlines, like I have a flight next month that's supposed to go from New, uh, Toronto to New York, and Air Canada's like, sorry, I don't, we don't care what the DOT says. And people are, United's being sued right now by a Minnesota police officer because they were only going to offer them a travel credit. And I'm thinking about doing the same thing with Air Canada because it's just wrong. You, you know what? When people, when they, and, and not, and not on my behalf, my tickets are like three, four hundred dollars. It's just the principle. There's so many yeah. people out there. Americans even... refunding us almost eight thousand dollars because we have, there was four of us. It was a flight to Budapest and a flight back from Munich. It was expensive. They were like eighteen hundred dollar tickets. So uh, well, that's a I relief, wrote... to be honest. We need the money. Yeah. Well, I wrote a big post this week and actually did really well. And I'll tweet it and I'll put it in the chat room after. It's called uh, "My Experience Calling Five Different Airlines to Get My Money Back" because I had five different flights this uh, month on different airlines, and they weren't all the same. But American was the best. So you mean even if they've canceled the flight, it's not automatic that they'll give you your money back? Some of them weren't. And, and, they just give you a credit. They, they try to give you a credit. They're really trying. They're really trying to sell you on a credit, and they're doing a good job because now they said. First, it was just good for a year. Now they're saying it's good for two years, which is generous. But some people, they need the money now. Yeah. And they, who knows what's going on? And some will even give you a 20% um, bonus in money. And same thing with cruises. Cruises will say, hey, we'll even give you a 50% bonus if you let us keep your money credit. Um, but you Speaking know, of everything's cruises. going to go on sale once it's, once it's over. So yeah. hold out. I'd get your money back first because that's the most important thing yeah, right now. Yeah. We don't know how long this is going to go on. I think it's going to go. I don't think it would be sensible to do too much traveling until there's a vaccine or until you've had it and you're immune. Some people will ha go through that. God, I yeah. hope you I hope you don't get it. We're, we're in its infancy. They don't really know. Don't I know. mean, maybe, I, maybe we've all had it. If they, we've all had it and we're not going to get it again, I'd be on a plane tomorrow. But right. it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Uh, you got in trouble with the Telegraph, a <laughs> British yes. newspaper. They called you names. Big time. Because you had the temerity to say nobody should go on a cruise right now. Agreed. I mean, I tweeted. They, that's nuts. A, a who, who would go on a cruise right now? Well, that's what I wrote. I said, what? I don't think any sane person would go on a cruise right now. And listen, I love cruising, but it's just not the time or place. 
And this writer from the Telegraph just lambasted me, calling me, you know, an armchair traveler, a so-called well, travel expert. You are no, you are a travel expert. You were certainly no armchair traveler. How many cruises have you been on in your life? I've been on dozens. I, I can't even count them. Yeah. But. I, I would not go on an ocean cruise right now. I would go on a river cruise. Uh, not right You know, now, it's funny. I was just talking to that about the, the least. I said, when we go back, because we love cruising. It is yeah. the best way to travel. It's relaxing. It's luxurious. It's fun. I like a smaller, the smaller ships. You like Seabourn. I like Silver Sea. They're smaller ships. So I don't think they're quite as uh, dangerous, perhaps, uh, medically. But y you and I both, I made this point to Lisa. I said, if when we do go back to cruising, and we will, We'll go on a river cruise because at least if people start getting sick, you can get off. You jump off. I can <laughs> you, swim to shore. You can swim to shore. <laughs> yeah. On a cruise ship, you can't. And that's my big beef with the cruise ship. Not that I don't think they're clean. You're tra no, they're, they work very hard to keep them clean. They do. And they're going to work even harder. So yeah. when they do come back, they're going to be extra clean. It's just the point is. You like know, you, I've taken you dozens of cruises. I've never gotten sick, not once. Yeah, can you find a port to get into? That's a big yeah. thing. But the CDC actually came out yesterday or, or two days ago. This is after that whole story with the uh, Telegraph, you know, basically agreeing with me saying that no uh, American or the CDC will not allow any cruise ships for the for, for the next 100 days to at least mid-July and to to cruise. So there's actually I, I wrote we a had story. A, we had it. a cruise booked in January be canceled because I don't think it'll be safe to cruise until – there's a vaccine or you're immune. Did you cancel it already? Yeah. You did? Did yeah. they give you your money back? Yeah. Except for a $200 uh, service charge. Okay. Well, that's, that's okay. And was that the travel agent ser service charge or? No, at Silver Seas. Okay. I, listen, $200, I can understand. You know what? Fine. You, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was happy. There was, there was a lot more than that I was getting back. <laughs> right. The cruises I, I, are expensive. Yeah. Now They are very expensive. I uh, I have to say I, 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 I don't want to give them up. Um, I should point out for people who say, oh, a cruise is a floating petri dish. So is a casino. You ever go to Vegas? No. So is, I mean, there are most vacations. You ever go to a resort? That's the same thing. A bunch of people together in eating, in, in you know, entertaining. That's the same thing. The only difference is you're on a boat. And that's hey. the problem right now is you can't get off the boat. Right. <laughs> but... Yeah, I think things are going to change. I'm not going to Vegas for, for another better. year either, right? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're, who's going to go to a basketball game? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm never going to a CES ever again. That's it. Yeah. I've, those I've, getting, those, they're all I've been, getting hurt. But before yeah. we run out of time, how much yes. time we have? We got plenty of time. Go ahead. Okay, because I promised the website. I said there was a website that everyone was saying, please tell us oh, now. Oh, yeah, I don't want to. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully you'll yeah. like it. I actually tweeted it. I put it in the chat room. So this is called, it's the museum, which was a popular museum in D.C. And unfortunately, they had to shut down because yeah, the rent was so expensive. So sad. So if you click the link, it's easier. But the URL for people listening is museum.org slash today's front pages. And oh, you know, as a world a traveler, idea. it has 500 newspapers from around the world. And you can sort by continent, by um country and I, I i love it i mean as an armchair traveler right now and it, and one of my favorite things to do when i travel although i don't you know sit there and read the newspapers all the time but it's fun when they're by your hotel room and you just check it out and see the front page um you know they have small town newspapers too they do and that's that's a, a, one of the most important points because i mean as a journalist i really think that um everyone's got to support yeah. these these writers and 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 papers Wow, look at this. So, Have you seen this one before? No. I was so sad when the news, museum closed because it's such, it was such, I mean, I'm in the news business, so I love it, but it was such a great museum. But this, so are they going to continue uh, on online? Is that the future of the museum? You know, I, I'm not even 100% sure. I, I saw this in a newsletter that I get um, this is by great. Brian Stelter. This would be, oh, Brian's great. Yeah, this would be a good kind of future for them. Do it all online. You have to pay rent. Um, right now, it's uh, it looks like the U.S. only, but it'd be fun to no, see. No, 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 no. It's not because no? if uh, in the upper left hand corner. Oh, I'm maybe sorting just it map. by region. Let me get international. Sort, there you yeah, go. You can sort by Europe. There you go. So Asia. they'll have all of them. Okay. Oh, that's really cool. And you can zoom into where yours are. That's yep. real. This is great. Yeah, they have them all over. Yeah. So what fun? What fun? So I hope you. Uh, Thank hope you, you like Johnny it. Jet. Great link. The museum. 
I'm glad you like safe it. Safe not traveling. Safe quarantine. <laughs> I, listen, we're, we're here to May 15th now in L.A. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to be home. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Happy to be home. Where are you going May 15th? I'm not going anywhere. That's just the, the mayor came out yesterday and saying that everyone's, you know, the stay at home order has been extended till May 15th. That's more than a month. Wow. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 ask Leo. Line four. Everybody wants to break free right now. Larry in San Bernardino, California. Hi, Larry. Hey, Leo. How's it going? I am great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, my question is quite complicated, but basically let me start by saying um, I have fiber optics to the house. Um, the uh, router is hooked up uh, over the Ethernet cable um, right now. Okay. Uh, Mocha is disabled. Okay. And uh, I have a network attached server, simple uh, single board computer running that right now. Nice. And um, my uh, question actually concerns uh, single board computer clusters. And how they are attached and ran, pros and cons, because my ultimate goal is to basically host a uh, media website where people can watch videos and whatnot. Nice. And I'm curious as to your thoughts on that. Uh, so your uh, first thing is, of course, does your Internet service provider allow this? <laughs> Well, that's the question. I'm not quite sure. I Frontier. I, so. I can guarantee you then <laughs> that Frontier has in its terms of service, which no one reads, the line, you may not run a server out of your house. doesn't mean you can't. I think for your own personal purposes, for instance, a NAS running Plex that you could log into and, and, and you know, as you travel, I don't think Frontier or any ISP would have a trouble with that. But uh, if you're going to suddenly run a uh, YouTube out of your house... Uh, they, they may they may have something to say about that. They'll certainly notice all that traffic. So that'd be the first thing. And it, one way to get around that is almost all Internet service providers offer uh, business class service, which, you know, will have several advantages. It won't have a, a cap. You're going to find your bandwidth cap is going to be a problem at some point. Uh, and they are almost always permitted to use a server, run a server on that. So that might be the first thing to do is, is inquire into your Internet service provider. How much bandwidth do you have? Uh, upstream, right? This is all about upstream. You're serving video. I guarantee you, your upstream is a fifth or less of what your downstream is. And that could be a big problem. Now, you said you have fiber. Maybe you have symmetric fiber. If you do, I'm jealous. Uh, symmetric means that the upload speed is the same as the download speed. But again, I would check. Most of the time, I doubt Frontier offers uh, symmetric. Usually, they'll, even on fiber, they'll have a very high speed download, a gigabit download but maybe only 20 megabits upload. So check into that. Um, you said single board computer. What brand, what kind of single board computer is it that you're running? Uh, it's Odroid and it has the EMMC memory. Okay. So I don't know exactly how you would cluster those. My Generally what people will do if you want to do what you're doing, for instance, if you're using Plex, which is a very good, very common, widely available media server technology, you just have a powerful uh, computer the most important thing is is the decoding capability because all the video that you're sending out is in a is in a compressed form. It's an MP4 or ideally M, MP5 high efficiency video codec HEVC, uh, but that takes some horsepower to decode. That's why I imagine you want to use a cluster. Perhaps each person is on a different single board computer. They're inexpensive, and so you could have twenty of them. But I don't know if that's you know, I don't have any experience doing that, so I'm not sure if that's the ideal way to do it. You'd also, you'd be connecting each of those to the drives. You may be I.O. bound more than you are processor bound on all that because each of them has to access the drive. And, you know, they're all fighting over the drive's data and resources. Um, it's an interesting concept. Um, I, don't, I don't know anything about how to cluster them. I'm sure that's an easy thing, though, to, to Google. Even if I did know, it'd probably be an inappropriate uh, topic for a conversation uh, on this. The Odroid is available from uh, hardkernel.com. It's a kind of a neat single-board computer. It's a, neat, it's a neat idea. Basically, you're getting a 64-bit um, computer with, you know, it's the size of a matchbox, 
and uh, well, a little bit bigger than that, size of an Altoids tin, and you're getting a lot of horsepower. And because it's dedicated, you can uh, you could you know do a lot with them. It's an interesting idea. Um, I don't you know that's a good question. How would I gang these all together? That's what clustering is, is essentially combining multiple standalone PCs into one large device. It's 100 bucks for the uh, Odroid. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, man, it's an interesting idea. I don't know anything about it. Um, <clears throat> somebody's suggesting Cody as another server. Um, oh, you do have symmetric speeds from uh, from a Frontier. That's nice. If you If you live somewhere where they have that kind of bandwidth... Well, what else are you going to do with all that upstream bandwidth? <laughs> Create a lot of your own mini YouTube. <laughs> like, what an interesting idea. Uh, Larry, I, I don't have a whole lot to tell you except uh, have fun. Good luck. It sounds, uh, it sounds like an intriguing uh, possibility. It's very altruistic, unless you're going to charge. Maybe it's not altruistic. Maybe, maybe this is a, a money-making scheme. Joe in Austin, Texas. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Joe. Joe. Hello, Joe. Unmute your mic. Okay, I got it now. Okay. I could hear you, but I couldn't hear you. California. Pardon me? How's it going out there with you in California? We're surviving. You know, we. Uh, I'm in Northern California. They were the first to do a shelter in place. So fortunately, we seem to have flattened the curve here. Knock on wood. How you doing down there? Doing okay. Good. We're lucky we didn't have a South by Southwest because that would have been a tragedy down here. Oh. It was, you know, I know they didn't want to cancel it because it's such a big deal in Austin. And, man, I love going to Austin for South by. But you're exactly right. There, there's no reason to have a conference these days. That's just a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, so, that's part of my part of my question. Uh, we're using Zoom for recording, for doing meetings now for yep. neighborhood groups. Yep. And we're trying to figure out. Oh, I know Zoom has, has a, is able to record, but is there a way we can do this uh, to our systems or to our PCs? Or laptops without going through Zoom? Um, not with Zoom, but you can't. I think you can get it back and download it. I would guess. Actually, you know, I've never tried to do this. There is another way that maybe would be the best way, and uh, and then that is to stream it live to YouTube. Is it a? Does everybody need to talk, or is it just a presentation more? It's uh, <clears throat> the basic neighborhood groups where we're talking about what's going on with our neighborhood. So everybody's talking. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. I would, you know what, since Zoom will store it, it's part of the price, um, you could, I'm pretty sure after the fact you can download it, yeah. So it's okay. it Zooms to the cloud, but at that point you can send, say, yeah, I want a copy. And you could put it on YouTube or somewhere else if you wanted to do that. You I don't know what the host has, but I think they did the pro model because uh, we went more an hour than our, for our meeting. Yeah. 15 bucks a month is not bad. Yeah. I think it's a very, and we, I talked at the beginning of the hour, you know, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of concern about security and so forth. A lot of places have banned it. But I honestly think the company understands that and is doing the right thing to try to make it secure. You've already noticed a number of patches and upgrades. Yeah. My wife went crazy. She said, passwords? We all have to do passwords now? I said, honey, I know it's a pain, but that's called security. And it's and it's worth it to make it more secure. And I think Zoom is something everybody understands. We just, our city council just had a Zoom meeting. They limited it to 100 people, but I was able to watch it on the public okay. uh, channel. And so I think, yeah, Zoom, you can download it. Good choice. Everybody knows how to use it. I'd, I'd keep using it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Stay at home, homemade. It's a yum. Yum. Now, I found it very soothing uh, to be domestic yesterday. I think that's kind of maybe a little secret to helping me um, get used to this. It was cooking and Cleaning and sewing. <laughs> no, I haven't made a mask yet. I don't have the materials yet, but uh, they're on their way. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, is that the rag mask pro L? Do you have the link to that? Cause I'd love to see it. I'm looking at a lot of, uh, Well, I don't think, yeah, Bernina has some very fancy computerized machines. This will not, this will not use that. <laughs> this is just a basic, you know, portable sewing machine. It's fun, though. I'm trying to find the video. 
Lisa did a great video of me um, sewing. Let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, it's on my photos. I don't know why I don't see it. Maybe it has to sync. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you my video. Dr. Mom, you can comment on my on my style. This is Leo in his lair sewing. All right, so this is sewing lesson number two in COVID-19 crisis. You get yourself some EviroCare Ev vacuum bags. Those are for the filters. And then some quilting squares. I'm just practicing right now, but I'll just show you what, what you do. I'm gonna sew, just sew a line here. Let's put the foot down, you ready? Watch, here we go, straight line. Straight line, that's the key. Let the fabric go with you. And then when we get to the end, I'm just gonna put that in reverse. And there we have it, a uh, straight line. <laughs> I now know how. Are, are you to emulating sew. the Tiger King right now? I, Is that the <laughs> Southern accent for? I now, look at that, look at that, look at that. Straight line. I'm working on seams for this. Is a practice hanky. So, how about that? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> have, I have to say, my mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, corners and curves are going to be a little tougher. Yeah. <laughs> I ordered some uh, uh, four gauge uh, copper wire for the uh, nose piece. Yeah, I have the old masks from the fire. We still are using those. But I, but I, but I did a little. I'll show you. I did the bobbin winding. This is the first big step. I'm watching it. I'm watching it. Oy, 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 oy. This is so cool. I love this little machine. I gotta say, this is so awesome. It's so awesome. The B35. Doctor Mom recommended. That's all. I just, you know, she's my sewing. Although. I, I, I think Lisa took a video, let me see if I can find that, of me um, talking to my mom. Because my mom, cleaning and oiling it, what? You didn't tell me I had to maintain it. Oh, man. Here I am. Uh, Much more immediate. Talk, now what do I do? Talking to my This is my mom teaching All right, so me. All right, so Leo has decided to start <laughs> sewing because he's going to make masks for all of our health care workers polka and dots. people that need one. I've got polka dots. I'm making a polka dot mask. And thank God his mom's here she's because he me. doesn't know how to sew. <laughs> <laughs> so this now is going to be a know? fun I'm experience. Okay. Honey, yeah. Even, even though it's tedious... Did you tell Lisa all the things I said about designing it? Not yet, but that's coming later. I first have to learn how to sew. Mom, I have a more important question, much more immediate. Now what do I do? I mean... <laughs> now what do I do? I already can knit. <clears throat> now what do I do? Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography. We got your smartphones. We got your smart watches. Uh, I can now talk about sewing machine technology. 8888-ASK-LEO. <laughs> That's the phone number. 888-827-5536. We have a great website, place to go if you hear something on the show and you didn't get to write it down. Don't worry, you don't have to write it down. We do it all for you. We've got uh, James DeRuvo. He's writing it down so you don't have to. We'll post it at techguylabs.com. There's no entry fee. There's no sign-up. 
It's absolutely wide open and free, and it's got a great search. You can go back. You can even look at old episodes or listen to old episodes. We go uh, way back, way back in the way back machine to 2004. I think some of the uh, the episodes from 2004 are missing, to be honest with you. Maybe 2005, too, but we go, we go uh, a bit of a way back doing this show since then. Uh, let's go back to the phones and Mark in L.A. Hello, Mark. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, Leo. Your mother sounds very sweet. <laughs> but during the break, I was playing a video of my mom teaching me how to sew. <laughs> she is. She's yeah. adorable. She's wonderful. And, you know, honestly, just between you and me, part of the reason I bought a sewing machine is because I knew it would thrill her and she would get a lot out of teaching me how to sew. So it's been a nice thing to do. She's in Rhode Island. Yeah. I'm in California. It's been a really good. Yeah. You guys are bonding. That's yeah, cool. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. My, my wife, as we speak right now, she's sewing. She's uh, making designs to sew masks. I think that's a hot thing right now. You go on Etsy, you'll see a lot of them. So uh, what design does she use or she's making her own? Uh, well, right now she's making her own because she she uh, sews anyway. She's really good at it. Yeah. And so she's going on YouTube looking at different videos and getting... I feel like there's a lot of ideas out there, and if you could coalesce them into the perfect mask, you'd have something. Yeah, and so you want to, we got a lot of fabric around here, so she's going to experiment. And, nice. And before you know it, I'll probably have a polka dot mask, too. I honestly think it may be <laughs> the future. You know, we're going to wear masks now, but I think going forward, you know, it's flu season. Maybe th maybe this will be a fashion statement. Maybe it's the next necktie. You know, I'm sure the first person who said, hey, we could tie something around your neck to kind of constrict your breathing, and you could wear it around and be very formal and attractive. People said, are you nuts? I'm not wearing that. Yeah. Guy probably said, well, what are you talking about, George? Put something I'm, not, around your neck. I'm not wearing that. What are you, crazy? This guy's weird. <laughs> somebody pop, then somebody popular wore the tie. Exactly. And all of a sudden, everybody Exactly. I think masks are going to be like that. And yeah. then, you know, in five years, we'll look back and they say, yeah, that's when we started wearing them. By the way, so masks look, have another benefit. They, they defeat face recognition. We're all getting very paranoid about widespread face recognition. Just wear a mask. Nobody will know yeah. who you are. As soon as LeBron or Madonna wears one, everybody exactly, wear it. and you know they will. <laughs> LeBron's doing it. I got to do it too. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, but uh, with the question I called, and um, I was wondering which is better, the um, and the Nvidia Shield, the newest one, or the uh, Roku uh, uh, Ultra? Right. So you have a 4K TV. Yeah, I got a 4K TV. So, I got a Sony 4K. So you need a 4K streamer. These are both streaming devices. You plug the internet into them or they go on the Wi-Fi with them and then plug it into the TV. One advantage of that is a lot of TVs nowadays, the software in them, even though they're smart, is not very good, not kept up to date. Plus, the TVs are spying on you. So I honestly think these days, don't connect your TV to the internet. Connect your TV to a Roku or an Apple TV or one of these NVIDIA Shields. And you'll get a much better experience. The software is much better. The processor is much more advanced. The capabilities are more advanced. And you won't have this spying problem, you know. So uh, I have both. I have the latest Shield. I really love the Shield. This is based on Android TV. And because NVIDIA makes it, they put their very high-end Tegra chip in there. And it is a really sweet machine. If you want to play games, you can use NVIDIA Now's uh, uh, streaming service, game streaming. It works quite well. They're a little more limited. Roku has the most channels of anybody. NVIDIA, uh, because uh, some, like, H I can't get HBO on my, uh, on my NVIDIA Shield. I can get it on my Roku. Uh, the Roku's also cheaper. Remember, the Shield's almost 300 bucks. The Roku Ultra is about 100 bucks. I think it's every bit as good, and it has many, many more channels available. The only negative on either of these is it doesn't have any of the Apple stuff. So if you buy stuff on iTunes, TV shows, movies, you're not going to be able to play them on a Roku or a Shield. You have to get an Apple TV for that. But if you don't, then you're golden. And I think, frankly, I'd say as much as I love the Shield, I think it's a great product. It's somewhat limited, unless you know you're going to be using... The NVIDIA uh, GeForce Go, uh, or Now, or whatever they call it, gaming platform, I would go with a, a Roku Ultra. Okay, so as far as uh, 
picture quality, I wouldn't notice a difference. No, they're both excellent. The no, I, well, I watch them on my 4K LG, and, the, and their HDR, they look excellent. They're both very good. You know, the Shield has a much faster processor, more memory. One of the reasons it's more expensive. It's really a more el elaborate computer. I wish that the streamer companies, the over-the-top companies, would treat the Shield and Android TV in general as well as they treat Apple and Roku, but they don't. Uh, and so you're a little left out. You know, you'll find stuff that you want to watch. It has Amazon Prime. It has Netflix. Of course, everybody does. It has uh, some limited services. Um, Hulu, you can watch on it, I think. I remember I couldn't get HBO or Showtime. Um, it has better gaming because it's a more pa powerful processor. I like the user interface a little bit better. But, uh, boy, it's oh. three times more expensive and... Honestly, it, it doesn't do all the channels, I think, that you're going to want it to do. Okay. And, and I have to thank you for um, – I went with the uh, Eero for the uh, nice. Best system. You happy? I, I, yeah, I am. I, I yeah. didn't know which was better. The guy at Best Buy really couldn't help me between the uh, the Orbi or the or – I have uh, both, by the way. I have an Orbi at home yeah. and I have the Eero at home. And the reason I got the Orbi is because they have now Wi-Fi 6 on the newer Orbeez. Very, ex really ridiculously expensive. But I wanted it. It was a, one of the few routers at the time I could get with the new Wi-Fi. And I wanted to try it. And I, I really like the Orbeez for speed. But as far as intelligence and capabilities, nothing beats the Eero. Oh, it, it's excellent. I have a, I have a man cave that's uh, in my de it's, it's like a detached garage from my house in L.A. And um, before I was using the uh, Netgear uh, Night was the Nighthawk. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I had that for a while, and uh, but it died on me. And so uh, then when I wanted to upgrade, I, I listened to you about the mesh system. So I said, you know what, I'm going to try. I want to try the Eero. It's, it's worth like, it. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's it's pricey, but I'm getting what I pay for. I I there's no lack at all. Yep. Good. I'm glad it's working out for you. I really like them. They are a sponsor, I should mention, on some of our podcasts. But uh, I, I use both. I've tried them all, pretty much. And uh, of, uh, the Orbeez the fastest, less capability. The Euro is the most intelligent. And I think for most people, it's plenty fast enough. I think it's a very good device. Yeah. Now, as far as faster with the Orbe versus the... Uh, uh, we, uh, as a... Uh, Video quality any better with the speed? See, I'm all about the video quality. Yeah, no, it sounds like you are. <laughs> Ideally, you'd want to you'd want wired because uh, for 4K HDR video, 25 megabits at least. You, you know, honestly, I think 50 would be better. Uh, and it's also latency. You don't want you don't want uh, slowdowns and stuff. But as long as you have a good strong Wi-Fi signal, you'll be fine. I watch uh, I watch it on a wired system because I that's I want to plug into the you know want to plug directly in if I can. And I usually find that works the best for high. Uh, this quality won't vary because once it gets it, it's going to decode it the same. It's just you might have some dropout or buffering from time to time if you, if it doesn't work. I, yeah, if, as long as you're not getting buffering, you're you're good. You're golden. It doesn't sound like you are. Zero buffering. Yeah, I think you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. You're welcome. I should qualify, by the way. The Roku does do. I forgot. Apple now has an Apple TV app for Roku. So I take it back. Apple TV has no advantage. And it's more, it's twice as much as the Roku. I, I, for my money, the Roku is the way to go if you want to buy a, one of these uh, streamers on top of your existing TV uh, um, setup. Really like the Roku. I forgot about that. The Apple Apple kind of did things, did a thing no one ever expected they'd do. They made Apple TV available on, on some TVs, Samsung TVs and LGs. And they also... Uh, they also made it available on the uh, on the Roku. What a shock. One thing the Shield TV, the high-end Shield TV does is they call it AI upscaling. And, you know, I think it works pretty well. I don't really notice a difference. Most of the time, I don't care about 1080p on my 4K TV. And But theoretically, 1080p is going to look better on a 4K TV with this AI upscaling. I don't, I don't really see it. And, uh, and whenever I can, I'm going to watch 4K HDR streams anyway. But, yeah, that is one advantage the Shield has. Because it has so much horsepower, it might do a better job of upscaling. I'll give it some credit for that. Uh, as for remotes, let's see. The new Shield has a nice remote. It's triangle. Roku remote's pretty good. The worst remote is the Apple TV. I don't even know how they can continue to sell that. It's just terrible. <laughs> just terrible. 
8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. Uh, dissenting opinions are always welcome. You can also put those up on the website, uh, techguylabs.com. That's what I'm going to make with my sewing machine. Hot pants. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. <laughs> um, let's see. Stacy in uh, Commerce Township, Michigan. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Leo. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I called you several months ago, and you helped me with a question I had about my mom's um, Amazon device. Oh, yes. So yes. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, I have what I believe is an easy question, and I hopefully I'm just going to have my thoughts verified. So we shall see. Um, Stacy, you're I, right. You're absolutely right. I totally agree with you. <laughs> okay, go on. I hope I am. <laughs> okay, so I have a laptop with 250 gigabytes, yeah. and I have too many photos on it. And I'm scanning more. So my son said, why are you keeping your photos there? Move them off. I said, okay, great. What do I do? He said, get an SSD. I said, well, I can't just get an SSD because I can't just have one copy. Very good. One copy. Very, oh, you are so smart. You're listening, well, obviously. I yeah. listen, yes. Yeah. So he said, okay, so get two SSDs. I said, okay, well, then I can manage that, and then I can do an up online backup for my third and but then they arrived and yes. i thought wait a second so if i move the pictures from my laptop onto an ssd how do i get them from one ssd copy to the other oh. so then i thought how about if i have one of those hubs <laughs> but that's where i'm not sure if this I'm is right. this is why as soon as you buy technology it's just a never-ending continuous buying spree for the rest of your life. But now, now I need that. Now I need this. Now I need that. Yeah. So your machine only has one USB port on it? Well, it has two, but I don't know if both of them are 3.1 or not. I wouldn't worry about it. So you don't need a hub. You just need two okay. USB ports. The hub will certainly give you more than two. And if you get a hub, get one that's called a powered hub. You plug it into the wall because then you can use drives that don't get their power uh, the, from the wall, but get it from the USB port. They'll that'll do a better job powering them. But if you have two USB ports, as most people do on their laptop, you can plug both drives in. Both of them will show up, and you just okay. say, "Take all that, put it on there." There's even programs, and I would recommend them because it'll make it a little bit easier for you. That will synchronize the two folders. Uh, I use a program called. Um, second copy from centered okay. systems but there lot there's sync thing there's lots of programs that will do this so your 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 initial uh point was absolutely right if you're going to delete these photos from your hard drive because you need to save space on your on your 256 gig hard drive then you won't really have a backup the originals will be the backup and you only have one copy and one copy of anything is is a recipe for disaster because it's easy to, hard drives fail, it's easy to, you know, make a mistake and delete it. So you always want, you're right, three copies if possible, two different forms of media, and one off-site. So your, your initial solution, which is to get two drives, is great. And then maybe look at iDrive or some other cloud backup solution as a third way. Frankly, if it's photos, all you need to do is use Google Photos um, they have unlimited backup. You just upload it to Google Photos. And if you're an Amazon Prime customer, they also have unlimited backup. Flickr will let you back up 1,000 photos for free. But if you pay for a Flickr Pro account, which isn't too expensive, unlimited photos there. There's lots of places. That will. Another great one, come to think of it, is Shutterfly. Uh, and they're free. You can put all the photos there. And the reason that they do that for free is they are a photo print ordering service. So they figure, well, if you put your photos there, you're going to buy some stuff from us. So okay. there are plenty of ways to back it up to the cloud for free for photos. So do that for sure. That way, even if both those drives fail, you got one last resort. 
Perfect. Perfect. So your instinct is right. Yeah, get them off that internal hard drive. What I do if hard drive space internally is scarce is I only keep, the, say, the last year's worth of photos. So right now on my hard drive, I have a photo, a folder 2019 and 2020. And in a few months, I'll move the 2019 into the backup. So that way, because I don't usually work on photos that are more than a year old. Well, mine's getting really full fast because I'm scanning tons of old awesome. photos from my awesome. mom and dad. And oh, so that's so it, great. It scans the original and then it does this cool thing about edits it for me. And then I, so I have two copies of everything. So what are you using to do that? I'm sure lots of people want to yeah. know. Well, the Epson, I think it's Fast Photo. <laughs> oh, yeah. I recommended that just a couple hours ago. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. It's it, so easy. It's a little pricey up front because it's like 500 bucks, but it has that form feed, so you can just put it in and it just goes choop, 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 choop. It's great. And you can name them, and if you forgot one that goes for, you know, what you've already put in, you can tell it to go to that nice. order that you've already made. So very nice. It's very user-friendly. But you're right. That'll fill up a hard drive fast. It is. <laughs> yeah. It is. So, yeah, you start offloading it. Um, this is this is a good time to look at a – are you Mac or PC? PC. PC. I have an old, like, two-and-a-half-year-old X. Dell XPS 15-inch. Yeah, you just, so you yeah that hard drive's getting a little uh, a little long in the tooth. So you definitely want a good backup. Look at this second copy. It's a great little program. Uh, it's it's inexpensive. You can try it for free. Secondcopy.com. And what it'll do is it'll make sure that you have a exact synced duplicate. Um, so that makes it very easy. You don't even have to think about it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888. 88. Ask Leo. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Gizw is coming up in just a little bit. Dick D. Bartolo. He's our gadget guru. And uh, it's going to be a little bit sad because one of the key members of the usual gang of idiots from Mad Magazine uh, passed away this week. And uh, so we'll do a little tribute to Mort Drucker as well as talk about the gadget of the week with the Gizwiz. Uh, in just a little bit. Um, back we go to the show, line four. It's David in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hello, David. Hello there, Leo. Hello. Listen, I, I'm kind of the, uh, it looks like I must have been a librarian or an archivist in my past life because somehow I ended up with all the slides and pictures and sound recordings and for the family of probably two or three generations. And so... What I would like to do is... This is, by the way, this is the day for this. Everybody's been talking about this. And I think as we're stuck at home, right? This is a perfect project. It is a, it is a great time yeah. to work on these extra things that you didn't think you exactly. had time for. It's also kind of now soothing. Yeah. Look back at the good old days, right? People could walk around on the streets. So what? So tell me what you, what you want to do here. So I have slides. I have scan slides, right? So image files, PDFs, probably text documents of some kind, videos and sound files. Uh, and I'd like to provide them to family members, uh, you know, in a one, one kind of a one place, one stop shopping kind of place where they can go, where they don't have to sign up for anything. It's easy for them to access. It's going to obviously the, the amount of data and what's there is going to change over time. So some type of easy search or, or system of, sorting and cataloging these things as they come and go. Uh, easy way for them to access them, either downloading to their own machine or viewing online. And um, uh, and obviously I want it to be as easy as possible for them because they're not going to necessarily be technically adept at uh, logging into a place and you have to go here and click on this and down. You yeah. know, I want to make it simple for them. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I think we're talking about a lot of data. We're probably talking a, maybe a couple terabytes ultimately, but not right now. But it might grow to that size. Yeah, this is an interesting uh, challenge, and I certainly open the the floor up to the chat room for their suggestions because I'm kind of thinking about this. I, the first thing that comes to mind is making your own website um, because you could completely control that. But that's probably more work than you really wanted to sign up for. Well, unless it's a good WordPress plugin that makes it easy. I don't know of one, but I haven't looked. Have you done a website you know? before with WordPress? 
Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. plenty of times. Okay. Yeah. So um, what you want is a database, basically, uh, a document database that then would have search and easy, you know, viewing. I bet you there's a WordPress plug in to do that. Let me just see. That's what you're looking for is a document database. Um, and I do see, I just did a quick uh, search and there's actually quite a few. How to create a WordPress document library, for instance. It makes mm -hmm. document library management easy. Keep things organized, share resources, create a resource hub, a publications database. It could have images. That seems pretty good. This is, this is, uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes to this. This is at barn Two B A R N and the number two dot co dot U K. They make WordPress plugins, and then I'm seeing a an article best document and file management plugins for WordPress. Off the top of my head, that seems like that would be the easiest way to do it, which is to essentially create a website. They don't have to log in because it's your site. Uh, you can even name it, you know, the uh, the the uh, uh, David Family Website dot com, right. and they would go and you can. And the nice thing is. Actually, you know what I would actually think this might even be better is to make is to use wiki software to do this because that would be easier for you to create. A wiki is a user editable database. You've used Wikipedia. I mean, if you think about it, isn't that kind of what Wikipedia is? It's a it's a database of documents about a topic you can search for. The Wikimedia software they use is actually open source and widely available, so it'd be an easy thing and there are many uh, wikis online, wiki services. So that would be without, if you didn't want to, if you know WordPress, what you do, and you want to install something like the DocMan WordPress plugin that will do all that for sure. Um, so but the there's. Wiki then, even family members could contribute and say, it, oh, that's Uncle Joe in that picture. Bingo. That's, that's what you want. Yeah. Um, so there are a lot of, if you look for wiki hosting services, there are a great many of these. They're just like WordPress. Uh, but they're instead of using the WordPress software, they're using Wiki software. PB Works has been around forever. Wiki is not a very elegant looking, though, is it? It's it can of, be uh, with the right oh. theming, but as soon as you press the edit button, then it gets a little funky looking because you get an edit bar and stuff like that. But so if they're less sophisticated, that may not be ideal. But if but but as they play with it, the fact that they could modify it, and by the way, you can give permissions. We have a wiki, for instance, for my podcast network, wiki.twit.tv, and not anybody can edit it. It's running, that's running on the Wikipedia software, Wikimedia, uh, and not anybody can edit it. You request permission, but once you've got permission, you can, you can edit it. It's fairly easy to edit. Even your less sophisticated family members, once they've tried it a little bit, might be able to get into it. It's easy for you to add content to it, and all wiki software has... The administrator. Yeah, you're the administrator. Are you familiar with Wiki at all? I guess everybody knows oh, Wikipedia. Only, only as a user. Yeah. I know it's a it's a very flexible platform in the sense that uh, it allows for lots of different types of content, which exactly. is what we're talking about. Exactly. And then I would just need, I guess, to have my own. You know, I have a couple domain names of my own, and I have to get my host to be able to handle huge amounts of data, which would just probably be at a Well, look at these Wiki exactly. hosting services. Uh, Wikipedia has a page for it. There are a lot of these guys. And most of them have a ton of storage, so it's a fairly easy thing to do. There is a service I use that I really like that might also be suited to this, and I would I would play with it just to see if you like it. It's called Notion. It's Notion.so, and you can get an unlimited storage account for four dollars a month, forty-eight dollars a year. That's actually what I use, Notion.so. It's kind of like a wiki. It's unstructured. But you can make pages public. You can share p links. The links are not pretty, but you could use a URL shortener to make them more pretty. Uh, and that's another way to do it. You can even give people permissions to edit it. It's kind of a wiki on steroids. They have a lot of really nice features. And I think for the price, $48 a year, and that's for you. That's Nobody else has to pay extra for it, nor do they have to sign in with an account. I think Notion, I'm more and more moving my, my life to Notion. It's a really interesting. It's hard to describe what it does. Well, will they be around in ten years, though? No, who knows? <laughs> but they do have. Yeah, you know, that's the problem. It's a startup. They just raised fifty million dollars, so yeah, I bet they will be. 
But um, well, is there a way to somehow integrate maybe a, a, a Plex server with my Synology NAS? Oh, you have a Synology. You, oh, st I didn't know you were that sophisticated. So well, Synology, one yeah. of the plugins for it is called DocuWiki. It's an excellent wiki. You can make it look very clean and pretty, and you can make it public. You'll have to port yeah, forward. For private for a group, like a yeah. limited access. You can have password payment. protection. Yep. Okay. I did that actually for our family. We had a family wiki on uh, on our on the Synology. So that's a that might be the best choice since you already own the Synology. It then it's easy because you're you're scanning these photos. You don't have to upload them anywhere. You just it's, right. On, it's right here. And it's next to me. I always have control over my own data. You, so no one can take, take it away from you. That oh I didn't so. I was holding back on that one because it's a, you know you have to buy a Synology. Now. But if you have a Synology, yeah. you're ready to go. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Synology has a number of other ways you could do this. But I say DocuWiki, which is free. It's built into the Synology. It's one click to install. You can make it public uh, in the sense that you can open up the the, the web port. Um, you you can make it password protected, but you people can surf to it. You're basically serving from your house. Yeah, uh, absolutely the best way to go. If you already have a synology. Great. Yep. DocuWiki. Take a look at it. You're going to love it. Thank you, Leo. My pleasure. Thanks for the call. Dick D. Bartolo coming up. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Boogie. Oogie. Oogie. That's my kind of talk. It's time for Dick D. Bartolo, Mad Magazine's maddest writer and the gizmo wizard on this show, our giz whiz. Dickie D., it's a, it's a sad note. I saw it on your Twitter. Um, one of my very, I, when I think of the usual gang of idiots, uh, the, the guys, and that's, by the way, that's not an insult. That's the guys who wrote Mad Magazine back from the Bill Gaines era on. That's what it said in the masthead. And just yeah. uh, legendary people like Al Jaffe did the fold-in, uh, Dick D. Bartolo himself, who wrote all those great parodies and commercials. But I always think of uh, Sergio Aragones, the guy who did Spy versus Spy, but I always think of Mort Drucker. Because he, to me, he was almost quintessentially the look of Mad Magazine, wasn't he? No, no, absolutely. He did... A majority of the movies and the TV takeoffs, and we did a bunch of them together. Yeah, and, yeah, and he you did were movie movie posters and album covers. He was really incredible. And the favorite thing about Mort was, you know, I would write a script. We we rarely met on, on a piece. I would write a script like a Hollywood uh, script with the dialogue and some suggestions of my what might be going on in the panel. But then Mort would add other things. And and I was looking for an example yesterday, and it was something I totally overlooked. It's, it's a takeoff on Tarzan. And this is the speech balloon. It's something like, everybody does something good for their fellow man. Now, that sounds good, right? Except when you look at the picture... The person saying it is a cannibal who is putting <laughs> a, who is putting a peace call worker into a big pot. That's not what you envisioned when you wrote that line, probably. No, no, it's very fun. It's very fun. It, oh it, man, it, his style it, was so great. distinctive. And when you when you you know if you look at it, now, did, it, could you buy his art on you know in galleries and stuff? Where did they ever publish you, it? You know what? The thing was, Mad owned everything. Until Warner took over. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of that stuff was auctioned off. And, and also everything we had in the office when Warner Brothers realized the stuff we had on the walls was the original art. Oh, they, no. They, yes. They copied everything oh. and sold it. I mean, it brought in a million some oh, odd. That's yeah. That's so frustrating. Yeah. I'll never yeah. forget. It, you very kindly let us tour. The Mad Office is on Madison Avenue, my daughter and I, and, and we saw you showed us some of the original art. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll never forget it. Yeah. Never. No, and Lucas and Spielberg uh, often had wanted, if anything was sold, they wanted first bid or to outbid whoever wanted it if it was a satire of one of their movies Yeah. on, on the cover. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course. Uh, 
201 minutes of a space odyssey, a uh, idiocy. <laughs> a space idiocy, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of all of the great parodies that you guys worked on together. It's just Oh my, yeah, he did. We did amazing. Star Black and Star Wars yeah. and, and Towering Sterno and Poopside Down Adventure. and. I'd lot. love to own just one frame of, uh, of Mort Drucker. Uh, art because it, it, it's it's it, my sense of humor was formed by it, uh, my sense of life was formed by it. I, that's how I oh, as well, a now, little no, kid don't go throwing no, I'm blame not, around. I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. I'm not kidding. As a little kid, uh, I read Mad Magazine, and that was how I learned more than anything, more than school, more than newspapers, more than Life Magazine. Mad Magazine was how I learned about how the world worked, who the people were in it. It was it was my school. Yeah. Uh, that's why when and I first met you, I was like blown away. I was bowled yeah. over. And that's why Mad was banned from pa parents didn't want their kids reading Mad. They're making fun of the government and you're yes. reading that? That's why the 60s generation <laughs> was so rebellious. We grew up on Mad Magazine. Yeah. It's your fault, Dick. Thankfully, thankfully. <laughs> well, I thank you for anyway, whatever plot I had. He had a good long life, did so many uh, great uh, pieces, uh, such a great talent. He even had a 1970 Time magazine cover, which is now in the National Portrait Gallery. Yes. Yeah, the battle for the Senate. Uh, yeah. with Tricky Dick on the front. <laughs> uh, yeah, it really, it, honestly... Um, it formed my uh, my whole aesthetic, my whole sense of humor, everything about me. So, I uh, well, that, I'm I'm proud to hear you say that. That's I'm, just great. I'm of course very great. proud to know you and have worked with you. And well, well we thank should, you. We should thank you. Know. And also, we, we I got a lot of emails, and it was great because young kids said, "Thank God for you and Mort." When I couldn't go to a movie because it was <laughs> R-rated, I at least knew what the movie was about. <laughs> Because I could read it in Mad Magazine, oh, so that was that man. was great. Did he continue to to work uh, up to the end? No, no, he had he, he probably about ten years ago uh, he had stopped. Not like Jaffe, who stopped at ninety eight. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. You you mentioned uh, Spielberg and Lucas. Lucas liked uh, Mort Drucker so much he actually commissioned uh, him to uh, to do the uh, port the poster for American Graffiti. Where were you yes. in 62? And yeah. so everybody's seen that, but, uh, whoops, I just went by it. But, uh, if you, if you haven't, it's uh, the New York times obituary, uh, has an image and that, that is his style right there in a nutshell. Oh, he's just great. Loving, he's just, he, he was super. Yeah. Um, we still have time if you want to do a gadget. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to do a, a quickie gadget that I bought one of the, the, the one I got, uh, is now not available, but. I find them very useful is aluminum laptop stands. Now that you're watching so much on your laptop, what, what happened was my desk is filling up with so much junk <laughs> that I couldn't see the screen anymore. And I thought <laughs> if I could raise the laptop. Just a little bit above the A noise. little bit. Yeah. And, and actually, if people ever travel again, I really want it for the hotel room. So you can put your laptop in, put the laptop at a severe angle, then open the lid and then you'll be oh, able to watch the movie let's, very let's easily from oh. uh, across the room. And this little guy, it folds in half. It, it's eight and a half ounces, holds a laptop of up to, uh, I believe it's 15 and a half inches. And um, mine was $24. The one I like better is $23. And it's a real easy way to uh, change the angle. Uh, of a laptop. This one's I V O L E R, but you know, I bet you it's a Chinese company that probably has many different brands making it. But I'm going to order yeah. this because I love this idea. I think that's yeah. great, and it's adjustable uh, angle, right? Yeah, you yeah. can adjust it from uh, about two inches to six inches, or so, if you want, <laughs> in angle, uh, 15 degrees to 40 degrees. I just ordered it, and as usual these days with Amazon's two-day shipping, it'll come in May. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because they're prioritizing, uh, you know, uh, essential needs over silly things like laptop stands. But I just, yeah, I just yeah. ordered it. If you want to order it, go to Dick's uh, website, Gizwiz, G-I-Z-W-I-Z dot B-I-Z, and click the Gizwiz Visit the Tech Guy, 
And there's a video, there's a, a photo, and there's a link, uh, affiliate link, which helps stick out a little bit to uh, to order. And I just did that because it looks really cool. Thank you. Yeah. You are a kind man, yeah, sir. Yeah, it looks really nice. I, I grant you another 10 years <laughs> uh, on top of what you were figuring for yourself. <laughs> Gizwiz.biz also is the home of the What the Heck is That contest. It's a fun way to win an autographed copy of Mad Magazine by identifying a close-up picture of a gizmo or a gadget. Uh, a little more time left in the, this time, this month's contest, so get over there, gizwiz.biz, and see if you can figure out what that is. Dick's got a great podcast, too, the Gizwiz podcast. You'll find that at gizwiz.tv. Thank you, Dickie D. Okay, buddy. See you next week. Stay healthy. Stay well. Yes, you too. Yeah, at Dick's least. Disneyland is in the epicenter of the uh, epidemic, so we our thoughts and prayers, as they say, are with you, Dick. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Hey, thank you so much to our musical director, Lady Laura. Thanks to Kim Schaffer, our phone angel. Thanks most of all to you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Stay safe, stay healthy. Leo Laporte, have a safe geek week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week at Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.